the adventure name is the hideous halls of mugdal blub this uh, keep of uh, these hideous halls are below is slowly collapsing into mush from some sort of um, otherworldly presence the stones of the keep feel spongy and they have a dripping melted wax like appearance the crenels of the keep fold and sag loose rubble has stewed down into pools of globby mortar. The whole place is basically a gaping shell upon the hill. You found a rusty trap door in the floor of the place that led down into these halls that are below. In these halls below, you've run across all sorts of strange things, from mutant catfish that you made friends with to what you believe are the long lost survivors of the bitter mold family, the family that once held this keep. They have become almost... Um, just very pale, stringy hair, very rubbery skin. You notice that your piercing weapons kind of do a little bit less damage to them. And you have kind of got to war with them because they are against the mutant catfish. And then there's a third faction down here, which is a band of feral halflings. Carnivorous, uh, vicious, dangerous halflings that have their teeth uh, filed into sharp points. And you have kind of a, a neutral alliance with them that lets you pass as long as you do no harm to their area and as long as you continue to fight the bitter ones. So that's where we left it last time. Let's do some character introductions. We'll start out with Amriel. Hi, um, uh, Amriel is a, an elderly elven woman. Um, she has, uh, she brings with her to the dungeon her uh, companion, Morden Kanan, a cat. Um, and you'll hear her talk uh, a lot about her little June bug. She's referring to her granddaughter who is sick. And uh, she's, she's been able to afford the first, uh, uh, well, she didn't now realize it was just the first treatment of her. But um, the healthcare system in this world is terrible. And the apothecary is requesting even more money for the second treatment. So she has to continue her adventuring life. You guys picked up a new companion, a goblin named Badger. Hello, uh, uh, Badger is a uh, uh, goblin noble, um, which makes him uh, just barely middle class in other sorts of circles. Um, he's uh, uh, seventh in line to the throne of the Mutter Clan of goblins. Um, he keeps a uh, has a, a little locket with a number in it that. Um, is the sort of countdown to the the heir to the throne for him. Um, so he's hoping that um, and or planning that um, his elder siblings will die off between now and, and the death of, of his parent. Um, but uh, he's here because it's safer here than it is around the home clan because of all the other younger goblins plotting to kill him to get closer to the throne. Rom, go ahead. Brom grew up as a street urchin and was rescued by the uh, uh, priests of St. Regnus. And so he joined the order and became a priest himself. Uh, he's still an acolyte uh, and has enjoyed uh, a little bit of the carousing and adventuring life uh, since uh, he went out on his own. And currently he's going to try his hand at uh, using a crossbow and see how that works. All right. Then we got fast feet. And you muted if you're talking, Dave. There's the button. Um, Fast Feet is a halfling thief who grew up on the thief uh, on the streets, possibly a friend of Brahms. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, Brahm took on airs, Fast Feet is still searching for fortune and uh, advancing his trade. His survival is mainly due to his nickname. <laughs> Malcor. Uh, Malcor was living living in the city as a jeweler, but unhappy with that life, so. He left it all behind uh, to go live at one with nature, became a follower of the god Geed, and is uh, mechanically a level two priest. And with a, strangely, a skeleton following him around and following his commands. Then one or more of the priests needs to make atonement, so you could have done that. I, I, I spent 15 gold because I had three first level spells go awry. Gotcha. You had to do a <laughs> lot of praying. <laughs> yes, that's about the fourth time I've offended uh, St. Direct. You pretty much spent all of Good Friday in the chapel praying. Yeah, I did. Praying the Stations of the Cross. <laughs> all right. 
So uh, the way we do this is we kind of have delving turns where we everyone gets a turn. You guys can move your full speed and do some sort of action like search or um, open a door. Uh, opening a door is free, so you can just open doors freely. Um, but you can search or um, try to manipulate some sort of more complex object than a door. You can also double move on a delving turn and twice your speed. And basically every delving turn there'll be a chance for wandering monster so you don't want to spend a lot of time just searching every square inch of something um and we don't necessarily need to go in order but you all will get to do something so if you all decide well i just want to double move you don't have to tell me you're doing anything and you can just move your token uh mm -hmm. twice your speed everyone has a speed of 30 feet or six squares or if you want to do something you let me know what that is that you want stairs like the stairs that are just to the left of badger here i normally put like a line of sight blocker um, partway down the stairs because usually when you're far away from them, you can't see what's down there. And I might move it around as you guys approach. So if you see the stairs and you can't see the end of them for some reason, just remind me and I'll move that line of sight blocker. When you get to the top of the stairs, you can usually see the bottom. When you get near the bottom, you can see past that problem. Yep. So given that, and given that you're going to go down there anyway, you know what's down there away completely. And the first entry hall, if you recall, it was um, streaked with mud. The floor is all streaked with mud. And you guys saw some footprints that headed to the west, and those still are there. In fact, they've got new ones there as the, as the um, halflings come and go. The air here is humid and sour, and the walls are slushy with water oozing from hairline cracks all over the place. In a niche to the left, and Badger, you can move down into the room so you can see. In a niche to the left, you can see a statue of a, uh, in fact, you all can move down into the light. statue of a human-like shape. It's um, got a worn copper plate that you're able to read the last time you're here. It says Sir Reginald Bittermold. And when you press that plate in, it opened a secret door behind the statue. So you know there's one of those there. It's shut right now. It leads down to the cavern right, below, crap, the bitter molds, and the mutant catfish. And that's where we'll begin. So, Badger, you can go ahead and do your first turn. Everyone else can, if you're just moving, just move where you want to move to. What do you want to do, Badger, down here? And maybe you guys can talk and decide which way you want to tell Badger to go. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what we've already. You guys have already explored. I assume you'll tell me about the trap in front of me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's quick. That's the quicksand. Foot, in front yeah, of the footprints end in very smooth stone, which is quicksand. Uh, can, there's a secret door behind that um, statue down yeah. there to the south, and uh, I was going to suggest we follow the there. original path back to where we fought that witch, so we can search that mm -hmm. area. Well, we might have to. Uh, we could also maybe pick off a few more bitter molds if yeah. we see them down there. But we want to do. Do we want to skirmish them? I don't think we can f go fight them head on. There's too many. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, one halfling I think said there was dozens. I yeah. think. So that's. He was good. probably exaggerating, but yeah, there's too way too many. Way too many, I think. Have we thought about maybe exploring this quicksand? Um, um, I maybe we could tie a rope to someone if it's. <laughs> Not like clay or something. If it's like just water with sand over it, maybe someone could like swim to the bottom of the quicksand, see if there's anything down there. There's got to be loot at the bottom. If Gary Gygax taught me anything. <laughs> no, Malcor will volunteer to do that if we want to. Cool. All right. I'm strong. I'll help pull you out. Okay. Uh, I'll get out my rope and grappling hook again. All right, you head over to the quicksand. You can hear the snarks and barks and snarls and such from the halflings. You can see their campfire in the room to the west. Uh, so they're still there for sure. The room you come into, if you recall, this chamber has dozens of carved niches, uh, and inside each is a stone bust. They're melting and distorted, each of the stone busts. There are uh, There is a stone jammed in the mouth of one of them. I believe you removed it last time. It started yeah. screaming. Yeah, it started screaming. Yeah. The, the halflings came. There's a passageway down to the south and to the west, and there's... The quicksand right in front of you. So Malcor, um, sifting through and moving, you know, trying to dig through the quicksand as much as you can for a round, you do not uh, discover anything therein. Oh, well. So now, um, where do you want to go to next? Um, so can we, now that we've made friends with the halflings, can we take that gem now, do you think? Or? I thought it was a stone. It was just a stone. Oh, just a stone. Oh, okay. Wasn't it? It was. It's just a stone jammed in the mouth of one of the statues. Yeah. Okay. Hard to keep it uh, quiet. Like, because it right. was really loud. Yeah. <laughs> then, um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to suggest we head towards the secret passage and try to take the original path back to that witch. 
All right. Area. Assuming you guys do that, uh, opening the door to the stairs that go down. Feel free to head on down these stairs. You're going to hug the wall to the left, they tell you, Badger. So you come down into a chamber, and in that chamber is a pool of water. And you see forms swimming around in the water, even though it's cloudy. The forms that you can see uh, dart here and there and eventually come up and look at you with their big fish eyes. They look like giant catfish. And one of their number, an old catfish with big, long catfish whiskers, comes out with his red scales with silver flecks and uh, says, um, <clears throat> We did not expect your return. We, we, still have, have. we have been fighting with the bitter molds a little, but we are gaining ground. Good, we've come back to help finish the job. Oh, then you may pass. I, I can't see anything. We're... Sorry, uh, where are we at? Malcor? Malcor, yeah. How about... Ah, aha. You good now? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so Badger, they tell you to keep following the wall to the south, along the edge of the water there, and when you come down into this cavern here that's about 10 foot wide opening by the water, that chamber below you to the due south of you, yeah, there is smooth rock layered with maroon stripes there. The river's cloudy with brown sediment and rushing through the tunnel. There are crude carvings at waist height along the walls. And you can see like light. Here? Yeah. Yep, exactly. All carvings along those walls. Back. And you can see light in coming from the chamber ahead. If you remember, in that chamber was a big um, pot that was kind of warm, but there's no fire underneath it. But now there appears to be maybe a fire underneath it, like a stew pot full mm -hmm. of halfling bones or child bones. Well, the fire seems to be burning again. I'd like to examine these carvings okay. over here. Um, uh, why don't you stop there, Badger? Let me tell you what you see when you find the carvings, Amriel. The rest of you can move down to where you want to be. Let me roll for random encounter. Should have done that a couple times now. For your... Oh, okay. So this will happen as you guys are moving through the chamber. And Badger, you're just about to go into the next one. So okay. when you guys get to there, everyone get to where you want to be behind Badger. Amriel, you're going up to look at the carvings. And our wandering monster is going to be a d12. Four. All right. You didn't. You didn't create a rollable table for that. I did not. No. <laughs> oh, one. Okay. Oh, we can add a one. You hear a uh, rushing movement coming your direction, like something running along the cavern ground. Probably a bipedal, and the first to see it is Amriel, just to the edge of her lantern light, coming around a, a stone. There, it looks like a bitter mold. Um, Amriel can see it behind her and to the northwest of her, about almost sixty feet away running toward your position, and I need you all to go ahead and roll initiative. From the north? From the north of it, northwest of Amriel, is where Amriel points. Okay. okay, Malcor, you're first. You don't see it yet, but Amriel's pointing to her northwest. Okay, I will move. Can I freely move over, jump over this river? Yeah, or it's about it? five okay. feet wide, so yeah, you can get a good, you can easily jump it. Okay, then I'll move forward. One, two, three. I'll stop there and uh, cast magic weapon on my longsword. Actually, I have a question about that longsword. It got stuck to that stone pillar. Was I able to pull it off, or is it forever... Oh, that's a good question. That? Um, I think you guys might... You left it in haste. You might have left it there. Unless okay. during that encounter you pulled it off, which I don't recall you doing. I did not pull it off, no, because uh, Brom lent me his silver... Mm -hmm. Which so, is sent. I don't know. Yeah. I we were in a hurry. Shoot up. Yeah. I so, Malcor, you, you can say that you purchased one if you want. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. And I'll cast Magic Weapon on it. All right, go for it. And I'll stop there. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, no. I lost Magic it, weapon. too. Oh, no. Okay, Fast Feet, your turn. Okay, Fast Feet is going to move up to the other side of Amaral. And we're enemies of these guys, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. the Bitter Mold, oh, yeah. you are. So, the Bitter Mold I, I have is a zombie token, but they're actually human. They do have long, stringy white hair and big bulbous eyes and rubbery skin. Otherwise, they're human. Okay, I'm gonna fire my short bow at it. All right, take that. Oh, a four is a miss. And I miss wildly. Rom, your turn. Okay, from my vantage point here, I cannot see it. Correct. You saw a fast feet shoot to the northwest, almost straight northwest. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna move to here. Now you see it. And good. Um, <clears throat> but it looks like Amrail's gonna go fight it. So I know it's Kyok. I'm gonna try it out. Protection from evil on Amrail. All right. Wait, no. On Amrail. I'm going to do it on um, Badger before I move. Okay. <clears throat> hey. You made it. Made All it. right. Badger, you have protection from evil. So chaotic beings have disadvantage to attack you, and it is your turn, Badger. All right. Well, 
I will move to here and see what I can see. Still don't see it. Right. I keep moving. Still don't see it. There it is. There it is. Um, I'm going to... Is there a defend action or something like that? A dodge or... Uh, there is not, and you already are getting advantage or disadvantage on them attacking you. There, there, you can dodge, but you already kind of yeah. have the advantage of it. You can also okay. ready. There's not really ready action, but I'll let you ready to. All right. Um, yeah, I will, since I'm holding the torch, I'm going to drop the torch, draw my sword and ready. Sounds good. All right. After Badger comes that bitter mold running for its life from something that's wild eyed. It comes to here. It sees you all, and then it will... Uh, reverse course. Let's see, that's two, six, seven, twelve, and run off into the darkness to the west. Uh, seems to get quite a ways away from the sounds of its retreating footsteps. And then, hot on its heels, is two, uh, three. I mean, of the little halfling guys coming to view right here. Boom! They were chasing after, it, and they come running up to there, and then sliding to a stop when they see you all, and they look at the fish. And immediately begin retreating. You know the fish in them aren't on good terms. So they're mm-hmm. going to be basically no factor if you ignore them and go chasing after your quarry. Because it looks like they're leaving. Um, Amriel. And your quarry's gone too. If you don't pursue, it's basically gone. Well, let me see if I can uh, get it. Um, I would like to thin their numbers. One, two, three, And go ahead and four. drop your token each square. That way you can see what you see. Yeah. So you heard uh, him run through the gap there that you see and to the southwest after that. Oh, he went southwest. Um, well, do, do we want to chase this guy? We've been in that chamber before. We know it's just a river that goes in and bends north. Yeah. And then there's a whole bunch of them to the southwest. So I think he's pulling us into an ambush. That's where all awesome. his buddies are. Well, let, me, let me finish my move. I, I kind of make a uh, non-threatening gesture at the halflings. We're kind of on uncertain. We're on good terms, yeah. relatively. They they betrayed us. We haven't taken retaliation. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, I see him there. One, two, You see a three, dead four. fish man. Uh, uh, the corpse of a mutant catfish lying, you know, dead and decomposing on the ground. No. He's still out of sight, uh, your quarry. All right. I'll, uh, I'll double move. This is dangerous, but get one. Now you see him. Two. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> uh, I back up. There's okay. a few of them down there. Uh, one, two, uh, two. And I run yeah. this way. <laughs> That's it. Oh, I forgot to tell you, they have missile weapons, too. <laughs> yeah. They like the four sling stones. Okay. Uh, I am done. So he runs into his group. The halflings retreat back to where they came from, leaving you guys alone here to your own devices. You know, going forward, would be into maybe an ambush. And so we'll come out of initiative, assuming you guys don't run into the ambush. And you can decide where to go from there. The halflings, again, like I said, go back. Okay, so Amriel, you were going to check out the ruins, right, before that happened. Yes. Can I go back to do that? Yeah, the ruins that you see, they are childish, jagged. They depict four-legged fish as big as horses, Eating and rending humanoid stick figures. <laughs> okay. That's, that's what you see. Not very sophisticated. No. All right. All right. All right. This is starving. You can continue on if you like. So are we going to try to make our way back to the witch's lair and start to the treasure? Yeah, I thought that was the plan. Get your yeah. sword back, maybe. I'll, so, Badger, uh, that'd be straight south of you. Yeah, we're all kind of looking at you, Badger, to be the... Right, sorry. I'll stare right behind you. Yeah, since you got the torch. Okay, so, Badger, you come into a chamber... Um, here, which is unoccupied. You guys are all relieved to find out. You can all move up behind Badger, as I described the chamber for you. There is a star, uh, a carved stalagmite. That stalagmite just to the southwest of Badger. It is carved with a spiraling mass of tentacles, and it looms ten feet high. Runnels of dew cascade down it, and the ground all around it is damp and wet. Before it is a cauldron, battered iron, uh, with a roiling boil going in it and a uh, fire lit below it. We so, previously kn- knocked over the cauldron did. and spilled it. It's So it's been okay. set back up. And we didn't discover anything substantial on the uh, Tentally uh, column either. I think I know we searched it and tried to find anything we could. Okay. Uh, and to the east was to where the, the witch east was? the east is where the witch was. That's the witch right. was here. Uh, well, let's make sure that... Let's go. Okay. 
We'll go back into the widgets area. So go ahead and let me back you up a second. As soon as you come around the corner, Brom and Badger, everyone get to where you want to be behind Brom Ooh. and Badger. When okay. you see uh, maybe the daughter of the witch, not the witch <laughs> herself, but another bitter mold has taken up residence here. Uh, this one bears a faint resemblance to the witch that you defeated. The chamber oh. that the witch is in... Let's blame it on that. Has a 20 foot high, dull gray, lumpy, scratched pillar. Uh, you can't quite see it, Badger. It's just right behind the witch. And you've been warned that that thing is magnetic. If you get adjacent to it, it will draw anything made of metal to it, or magnetic metal, that is. Okay. The smell here is of burned herbs and tangy iron. And as soon as the witch sees you, unlike the previous one, this one raises the alarm and starts oh. crying for help. But see how fast you kill her. See if anyone. Recognizes it. So roll initiative, everyone. <laughs> Wait, what? He's bad? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. The first thing that happens, you see Badger comes around the corner. He says, I see someone. Rom says, that's her. Oh, wait, no, it's someone different. And then a tendril lashes out, just like her mother did. Uh, but Mrs. Badger somehow stumbles out of the way of it, even though he didn't see it coming. And then next to go is Brom. To my regal bearing, oh. everyone thinks I'm taller than I really am. <laughs> okay, Brom is... Uh, uh, he'll, he will do Protection from Evil on Badger again. Okay. Yay. Nice. You got Protection from Evil going Badger past feet. And kind of move over here. And... As he moves up a little bit and is going to demonstrate why his nickname is Fast Feet and not Dead aim. Oh, Ooh, <laughs> maybe hit, it though. is. Was... 17 for nice, four. Nice job, Fast Feet. After Fast Feet, Malcor. Uh, Badger, did you want to use that great sword? Um, uh, not yet. Okay. I, I may borrow it if I screw up my long sword, but okay. even though plus one, I'm plus one with long swords because of my weapon mastery. Yeah, the only reason I would say is because it's not magnetic. So if you're going to get up near that rock, um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see. All right. Uh, I can't really do anything because I don't have my... Oh, no, I did buy a longsword. Let's see. No, I'll stop there. And uh, there's really nothing else I can do at the moment. Amriel, your turn. Amriel says, uh, I don't want those nasty little buggers sneaking up on us. So she moves over here. She throws down caltrops here. Oh, nice. Okay. And then she then steps up over here to get out of slingshot visuals. Smart. And she's done. That's why I'm the wizard. Okay, I'm done. There, that purple is caltropped. Amriel's done. Batcher. Okay, I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five. Um, drop the torch and try and grab her. Can I grapple her? Uh, yeah, you can grapple her. Is that just strength versus? Yeah, we'll do strength versus dex. Got her. She nice. Speed of zero. Not going nowhere. We'll do grapple like we do in 5e. Cool. All right. After Badger, it's over. Plagrina the second now. She will lash out at you with her tendrils with disadvantage because you are protected from her chaos. But with a 15 still hits and a six bludgeoning damage to Badger. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Braun, your turn. <clears throat> Bra and she's had Bra a full turn. round now to cry for help. Uh, you don't hear one coming yet. But you suspect someone might have heard. I'll probably. heal. I'll heal Badger if you want to attack with your crossbow. I'm pretty sure my crossbow is not going to be that effective, but because of her skin. Did it look oh, like the yeah. short bow pierced her skin? She oh, has cool. rubbery skin. Uh, the short bow should have done slightly less damage than I did to her. Yeah. So she has the same rubbery skin quality. Yeah. I'll go up and heal him, and then you can, um, you know, attack with your sword. Okay. Uh, I'll go up and cast Cure, Lo Cure Wounds on our Goblin Warrior. Oh. No! Cure oh, Wounds no. lost. Also a focus check for your protection <laughs> from evil. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. No! Oh, oh no! no. no. And I my god again, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you're spending all of uh, Resurrection Sunday in church as well. Yeah. <laughs> have you yeah. considered changing religions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, I have. Okay, yeah. after Brom, uh, fast feet. Right, another shot from Deadeye. Nope, wrong button. Here we go. Oh, no! Oh, oh fast my. Feet. Double ones. <laughs> 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 Malcor, go ahead. 
Okay, let's see here. One, two, three. I'll go to there, and I will attempt to heal Badger. <laughs> and then I think we should get out of here, guys, because this is not looking good. All right, there we go. Eight yeah, hit points healed. Nicely done. Oh, we're fine. We're fine. You're good. Good job. Amriel, I'm in. Your turn, right. Amriel. So, Amriel, uh, you hear nothing coming yet. Okay. I'm going to move diagonally. One, two, three. I can see her there. Um... I'm just going to shoot her with a uh, magic missile. All right. Uh, here's the roll. That's oh. a hit. Hit for one force. One force. Got it. After Amriel Badger, your turn. I want to drag her away from the pillar. All righty. Uh, make a strength check. No problem for you, it looks like. With your advantage, you do. Uh, you can move half your speed, and I'll drag her behind you. Three. I will drag her to here. Okay. Yeah. And then that's my move, right? Or does that also my action? That's your move. You can release her and attack if you like. Um, I want to. Um, I kind of want to. Don't let her. Don't want to let her go. Can I make an unarmed attack by kicking her or, or jamming my you shield bet. in her? Yeah. yeah. Or something? There should be an unarmed button. So. Yeah. I'm gonna try and just. I'll use unarmed, but what I'm really doing is trying to jam my shield in her mouth. Got it. <laughs> That's a hit for a bludge- <laughs> one bludgeoning. All right. Nice. Shut up. Shut up. Badger stand rounds over. Plot green is going to try and attack Badger back. The tendril trying to get free misses wildly. Uh, okay, um, you're starting to hear some movement, Amriel. You think uh, they might be joining the initiative next round? The other creatures, but not uh, this round. We've got company coming. Brom, your turn. Okay. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> does anybody next to me um, have a, a flask of oil that I see on their on their attached to their pack? Um, no, I don't. I I have oil, but I'm not next to you. <clears throat> I'm... Um, then I will back off, at least to here, and shoot her my crossbow. Then back off a little more. And nice. Ooh, nice shot. That's it. Her uh, rubbery skin reduces Pretty damage nice. slightly, but still wounds her. Good. After Braum, fast feet. Fast feet's going to take another quick shot attempt and another miss. After fast feet, oh. Malcor. I'll attack once with my long sword and then get out of here. Ooh, nice shot. 16 to hit for five slashing. You cut her down. She falls yeah. limp in your arms, Badger. Uh, dead. Uh, keep going to finish the rest of your turn. You guys want to get in and out of here? Yeah, quick. we still got to get out of here, right? <laughs> and then we're back well, in the same. So what do you maybe, we can, now for? maybe we can make a stand here. I mean, I, well, do you see, does uh, Amriel see how many are coming? Not yet. What do you want to do now? Uh, I'll move. Uh, either way, I'll move. Too. Okay. Amriel, still not coming. You know they'll be joining the initiative next round. Um... So she'd like to um, ready a uh, a sleep spell. You got it, Badger. Go ahead. <laughs> Casting a sleep spell on on guys who are running through caltrops is mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So I got my free hand. Um, I'm gonna move two to here and grab the torch I dropped. Got it. And then one, two, three, four. Finish my move to there. And We're still not free. Yeah. So I'm gonna move. Is it? Do I have to pay to move through people's spaces? You don't. You don't. No extra to move through allies. One, two, three, four. I'm going to get here uh, double moving, so I'll be waiting right here in okay. front of everybody behind my shield. That's the end of that round. I'm going to roll some initiative for the uh, other people that might be coming. And now you hear them coming. Brom, your turn. <clears throat> okay. Uh, first, Brom's going to move to there. He can't really see anything, but he's it's coming past the purple, right? Yeah. Yeah, don't don't run into that purple. <laughs> anything else, Brom? Move there. Anything else? No, nope, I'm gonna move to kind of here and uh, just as a single move, and then kind of ready a, the rest of my move if everybody runs up the the corridor. Ready your move. Okay, fast feet. What do you want? To? We're going north then. I mean, do we want to make a stand or get out of here? That's the question. I want to see them hit those cull traps and then make their lives a little bit miserable and then back off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's try to take at least one out and then back off. I'm just going to be ready with my short bow. Short bow ready. Okay, Malcor. Can I yeah. command my skeleton to... Oh, yeah. We forgot your skeleton. Yeah. That's going to be handy in this encounter. Uh, yeah. Okay, what do, you want, what do you want to tell your skeleton? Where Do I see... Hold on. Let me pan over. All right. So I don't see any of them yet. I just hear right. them. Right. Uh, let's tell the skeleton to like hang out there. And then I guess I'll hold my action. What exactly do you tell, do you tell the skeleton? Um... Talk to me like you're talking to your skeleton. Attack anything that comes like down this hall. Okay. Got it. The skeleton has his weapons ready to uh, bitter molds turn the first of them. 
Uh, one comes into view, and as soon as you want to trigger an attack, just let me know. I'll wait till they get closer you can. And then it uh, steps onto the Caltrops. That does damage to it and halves its speed. It's one damage. And the skeleton, what is the skeleton wearing or using, by the way? Damage again. Skeleton has a short sword, which okay. he now swings. And attack, yep. That's a hit for six. Nice. He, cuts it, he cuts it down. Then Sweet. the next bitter mold's coming. Three, four, five, six. It gets Slices to there. It, it sees its friend cut down and a skeleton standing there. So it backs up out of the light. And then uh, you hear a couple more moving up, but they don't come charging the light yet. And that's it for their turn. Amriel, your turn. Oh, now they're going to just be cowards. Um, uh, you guys hold them off. I'm going to uh, search the the witch. Yeah, good plan. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think she was around in this area somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yep. So double move to get in there. Next round, you can search. I'll tell you what you find next round. Bitter molds. And your light doesn't shine in there as far, so you hear them getting closer, oh. but they oh, don't come um, all the way into the light yet. And then Badger. Uh, I'm going to move up to here. Ooh, uh, see him now, piled up there uh, just on the edge of the light. Can I fire a crossbow bolt up at them? Well, you'd have to drop your shield, drop your right. torch, and load your crossbow and all that good stuff. All right, then I will... Uh, Drop the torch again and draw the long sword and ready an attack for okay. one that gets in reach. Okay. Uh, Badger, it's over. Brom, you uh, Brom will uh, go help Air, uh, Amriel. All right. Double move to get in there. You can help next round. Fast feet. You can actually take a shot if you wanted. A 10, though, does not quite hit. Then Uh If I was standing there, would I be able to attack a bitter mold if it. Um... Not unless it got Let's past your here. skeleton. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. I'll stay here. But I will try to trade out my shield and longsword for my greatsword. Okay. All righty. Uh, the first bitter mold's coming. Now they try to make a rush. One, two, four, five. It gets to there. Oh, and your skeleton would have read it again. So as soon as he gets there, the skeleton cuts it and finishes it. Wow. And then the next bitter mold... <laughs> Nice. Two, four, six. Gets to there. Badger, you can take a swing if you want. Oh, Whoops. no. <laughs> Badger misses wildly. Uh, then no other ready, I don't think. So then the guy will take a attack at Skeleton with its short sword. Prince Oops. the Skeleton for, oh, two, no. for two piercing. Uh, then the next bitter mold tries to run in behind him. And another one tries to run behind him. The bitter molds are making, you, a, making a rush now. Have you uh, made rolls for the call drops? Uh, they've been taking damage every time. Okay, all right. Yeah, all right. it does one damage to them, and they move at half speed for 10 rounds. Okay. Okay, so that's a bitter molds. Okay, Amriel, you're going to search this round, right? Yes. Okay. Um, on Plagrina, you don't find anything on Plagrina, but you do notice a item stuck to the uh, metal, the magnetic pillar. It's mm -hmm. a small metallic vial, like a... Uh, like a potion vial. Okay. I, I, can I uh, try to pull it off? Yeah. Strength check. DC 8. Oh, this is not going to end well. I might need help with this. Um, <laughs> you got uh, it. Nope. No. Yep. You can't get it off there, but someone's coming to help soon uh, after you're doing that. Bitter Mold's turn. Okay, the Bitter Mold's in the back there. Um, kind of stuck, waiting. That's it for them. Then Badger, your turn. I will try and stick the one that ducked. Ha! Ah. Nice. nice. You kill him with four damage. Then Rom, your turn. Um, I'm wearing chainmail, so I don't want to get that close to that thing. Um, but you say it's a metal. It's a metal vial. It's a metal potion vial. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so it looks somewhat sturdy. Yeah, it does. Can I move to here and try my uh, grappling hook on my rope and try to pull it off? Yeah, uh, it'd be really difficult. But you know, you, your try. attempt fails. But then. Uh, the grappling is sitting there, and Amriel could definitely hook it for you, and yeah. there give you a chance. So we're going right. to make a strength check to see if we can pull it off. DC now is 12, because the grappling hook's also trying to stick to the... Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, almost got it. Uh, almost. Uh, that's it for Ron. Fast feet. Fast feet's going to keep shooting, and yes. keep earning his... <laughs> Malcor's turn. Uh, I realize my mistake. I'm going to switch back to... We don't think these things are resistance against 
non-magical. It's just piercing? Just piercing, yes. Okay, then I'm going to switch back to my longsword and shield. And just... Okay. Then okay. the bitter molds try to overwhelm the front lines here. This one comes to here. Skeleton was ready to after your turn. No, it went last round, didn't it? No. Yeah, it went on your turn. Yeah. It's ready. It takes a short sword stab. It misses this time. Uh, Oof. Badger was not ready because he just killed one. Yep. So that gets there. It tries to attack the skeleton with a short sword. Misses. And another one gets behind. Another one is coming. That's it for them. Amriel, your turn. Um. So DC 8, if you get rid of the grappling hook and just try and... Or you just try and pull it off separate from the grappling hook. My odds of doing this are, are small. Uh, I'm going to go uh, back and I'm going to point... I think this is Melkor here. That's Brom. Say, Melkor. Uh, it's Brom. Oh, Brom. Okay, Brom, pull this off. And I'm going to run back here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, good. I can see things. Um, <laughs> and I am going to, uh, well, I can put two to sleep. So uh, I'm going to put the two closest ones to sleep, I think. Um, so let's let's give it a shot. Uh, here's, here's the roll. <laughs> Oh, no. oh, no. Spells, roll <laughs> our spells. Uh, Amriel's done. Bitter molds are back there waiting. Uh, and Badger, your turn. All right, I'm going to try and kill the one in front of me. Ten doesn't quite hit. Rounds oh. over. Rom. I'll try to pull the, uh, the DC vial. DC 12. Go for it. You got, yes. it. got you it. Pull your grappling hook and the vial loose from the wall. You kind of drag it along the floor a little bit so it's a yep. little bit away. You can then move two squares over, okay. pick it up. And then do the rest of your move. Six. Just double moving. All right. Fast feet. Well, you can't double move because you used your action to pull it off. Oh, that's right. So a single move. So it's right there. Yeah. Fast feet, your turn. String another arrow. And let loose. An 11. 11. Almost hit. Not quite. Oh. Malcor, your turn. Um, can't. I can't. Can I occupy my skeleton space for enough time to attack and then move? Or no. can I not? Okay. Then... I'll just wait, but uh, order my skeleton to, to attack. All right, stabs with his short sword. Uh, misses. Bitter molds emboldened by your failures. Attack. The one in front of the uh, skeleton gets an 11, which misses the skeleton. And that's for them. And then Amrigo, your turn. Sorry, I'm here. Um, I'm going to do a magic missile at the one in front of the skeleton. Okay. Ooh, a crit for 8 force damage. You obliterated Yes. <laughs> Boom. Obliterated him. How many have we taken out? Three? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, fish move where you want, Amory. Then the bitter mold's got a morale save to make. DC 15. Ooh, they keep fighting. Amazingly. So this one steps forward to here, um, and will attack the skeleton with his short sword, and hit it for four damage, and take one point from the caldrops. And then this guy will come. Um, Badger, your turn. Uh, I will do the predictable thing. 14, 14 is a hit. Five. Uh, three slashing drops it. Then nice. after Badger, that runs over Brom, your turn. Uh, I'm gonna load and fire my uh, Brom, Brom's crossbow. Seventeen hey, hit does three piercing, does one damage to the lead uh, guy. Fast feet, your turn. Fast feet takes another shot. Eleven's just a miss by a little tiny bit. Malcor, your turn. Still not twelve. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna stay here. Skeletons ready. Bitter molds. Uh, uh they're all. Then Amriel, your turn. Magic missile again. Uh, at the one that I can see. Okay. Fourteen is a hit. Yes. Three points of force damage. The one that you can see. And their turn. They retreat, all of them, back into that cave. Okay. All right, then we'll come out of initiative. That was awesome, guys. Yeah, yeah much much more satisfying than the last time we encountered these guys. <laughs> okay, so yeah, really now you have a little bit more time if you don't immediately chase after them to search the chamber in case you missed anything with your quick search, Amriel. Yeah, like. I would like to search more, and I think we left a weapon in yeah. on this pillar yep. before. You can yeah. buy your weapons off, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to do a, I um, hate to do this, but I'm going to do detect magic okay. here. Um, I think we know what the obvious things are, but it might be helpful. So okay. here we go. Um, okay, well, you didn't lose it. That's success. Sure. Yeah. Sense, okay, you sense magic on the vial. Focus on two rounds. You can discern its general properties. So we need to do um, two focus checks successfully to determine what that vial is with your magic. Okay. And um, can I just glance at the the cauldron and that pillar? Um, mm -hmm. I think I we nothing already magic know in the not, cauldron, huh? um, nor on the pillar. Okay, all right. Here's the first uh, focus. Made, Made it. it. Oh. oh no! Before you could find out what the potion did, your magic failed. Okay. 
but I don't lose the spell, right? Uh, right. For or focuses, correct. you don't. So you could cast the Alien Dragon if you want. Um, we'll also do the same thing like you do in D&D, where if you want to risk poisoning yourself, you could taste it to maybe identify it. <laughs> well, I mean, who carries around something bad? Is there anything on the vial that might give us a clue, like a, a picture or a word? Mm, let's see. Okay, so it's a, it's a metal um, container. It's got a stopper. And looking carefully at the stopper, engraved in the top of it is a, a skull symbol. Oh. oh. <laughs> Not a, a skull and crossbones or just a skull? Just a skull. Just a, just a skull. Uh, this is a little sure job missing. Uh, Normally I would uh, volunteer, but I'm the only healer left at the moment because Brahm lost. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't want to risk someone tasting it. Why, why don't... Um, why doesn't someone do, uh, do a thorough search of these two chambers while I attempt to detect magic on it again? All right, go for it. Okay, here we go. No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> now it goes. Okay, well I'm done with that. Okay. Um, you found you did you you got everything out of the room the witch was in everything out of the cauldron room. Uh, the bitter molds don't return. Okay. Where do you guys want to go now? Do we have to know what the potion does before we know how much experience we get? Oh, um, you actually are going to get... I'll do experience at the end. I don't okay. know what this means. All right. Uh, then, yeah, what do you guys want to do? Head upstairs? Uh, uh, I want to gather up my caltrops. <laughs> how heavy is the cauldron? Uh, you could roll it along the ground. It's real hot right now, but you could take some rags and roll it along the ground. Um it probably weighs upwards of two, three hundred pounds. Oh, okay. Um, Is it how about money? It's full of uh, a steaming, rolling, does, does it look broth. like? Does it look like they're? Um, does it look like they've been eating or drinking out of this cauldron, like using it as soup or a form of sustenance? Uh, yes. Yeah, we should take it. We could determine what this if this vial is poison. Maybe we could poison them. Ooh. Or. We give them giant strength. Or we give them giant strength. <laughs> either either way. <laughs> um, yeah. What is anybody here? Somebody said they were an herbalist last time. Is that character still here? That's not me. No, that was uh, one of the new people, I think. Got it. Okay. Growing up in Mutter Hall, I have become used to a great deal of uh, different poisonous substances in my food. I could taste the oh. potion. Do you want to risk it? <laughs> Uh, what what, did, what would I have to roll to try and determine what it does, not being trained in the arcane arts? You would kind of just know. Okay. Uh, well, but gotta... Before you taste it, when you take the top off of it, what's inside is an acrid, tarry substance. Um, the stopper, you think, maybe is lead. Uh, it's very kind of malleable. And also, before you raise it to your mouth or as you're getting ready to start, it says, no, no. The uh, stopper head actually speaks. It oh, says, no, wow. no, no, no. Okay. What? Well, why not? You should not be extirpa extirpated. Someone more powerful should, this should be used on. Okay. Uh, uh, extirpation is, uh, those of you learned ones, that is like removing from existence. Wow. Uh, Amriel will, will say, yeah, no, you don't. You, you don't want to drink that. Yeah. Save that for somebody we, we, are you, we don't like. <laughs> are you ask the stopper if the if it's if we can poison the 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 the, the cauldron? With no, it. no, 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 no. You must no. pour me on a worthy subject, and I will remove them from the multiverse. <laughs> oh, nice. Wow. Okay. You're, you're cool. I am cool. Yeah. Brom <laughs> turns chaotic immediately and says, "Ooh, power." <laughs> <laughs> I've got some uh, elder brothers I need to introduce you to. <laughs> yeah, you can you can mark down your number up by one. <laughs> Just pencil it in. Pencil in the new number. Yes. All right, we got to get out of here. All right, interesting. Um, we'll pocket that. There's nothing else in this chamber. I yep, don't think. Yeah, you've cleared these two chambers early before. Yep. With the cow trips, we don't want to chase the bitter molds right at the moment, right? Well, there yeah. might be other ways down there. It might not just lead to the bitter, bitter molds. That seems like a, such a bad way to go. No, but that's a big giant chamber, and they all have <laughs> missile weapons. We're going to die. Oh, okay. It is such a bad way to go. I'm glad that I uh, <laughs> convinced you not to chase that way. We went pretty far in, I think, the last time, and we... Uh, yeah, if you want to explore uh, the caverns... Um, killed. 
Uh, you guys can give uh, Badger directions. It'd be back to the fish cave and then along the north wall of the cavern if you want to explore more caverns. You know that went somewhere other than the bitter molds. Right, let's do or that. you can go back to the secret door. We do uh, have those skeletons <clears throat> behind the arrow slits. If yep. you want to go those guys yeah, there. those guys are jerks. We have to figure out how to get access to them or get the clerics right up. And for last, last time we tried to turn and I think we failed. Yeah. So Badger, they'd point you to the wall that's just two squares north of you, and then you follow that wall along, and that would take you deeper into the cave, somewhere they've never been. Let's do that. So there's a bunch of, there's several dead bodies in an area of the cave where there's some worked stone. The cave is vast, breezy. There's sheets of dripping flowstone covering the walls. Natural pillars rise from floor to ceiling. There's some cut stone, which is crumbling into gritty, uneven rock to your north and a flight of steps that go up. In the corner there, there had been a melee of some sort, um, at least several days old, with a couple of the halflings and one of the mutant catfish dead and decomposing in the corner. To the south of you is another dead and decomposing mutant catfish, and the river, of course, continues through the cavern. Are the catfish at all uh, sentimental about their dead? Not that you're aware of. Oh, is this the guy that's got the dagger? No. No, not okay. the, it's not charred up. Okay. Malcor is in the darkness and cannot there you go, Malcor. see it. I put you back. With the... Thank you. All right. So from this point, this is like as far as you've been. So now we'll go into rounds here. Let me do one random encounter on your way there. Da -da, nothing there. And now me it turns. Badger, go ahead and take your turn. So you see a river flowing through. It's wide enough you can jump it. And the party's never been to the west of where you're at. Do we know where the stairs go? Yeah, they've been up the yeah. stairs. They lead to some warrens where the halflings uh, live that you guys pass through on your way to some other caverns caverns to the west. All right, I will move over to here. Everyone go ahead and move where you want behind Badger. Get to there, you don't see anything else new, Badger. Um, the water goes through a cavern. You can just barely make out that there may be another cave that way. You'd have to wade through the water to get to it. No, yeah, I, I, see, I, I see some. Yeah. And to the south, uh, there's more caverns that are dry to the southwest. You see more you bodies. See? Yeah, you see bitter mold oh, bodies okay. lying dead on the ground to the east. All right. South first, I guess, right? Yeah. And you can keep heading south. You eventually come into these caverns that are um, drafty. We know bitter molds were here before. Yeah, you've never been down this cavern way. Right. Drafty, um, you come, if you keep going, eventually to a central rock that has flecks of white peppering it all around the, the lower reaches of the rock. This is the one in the center of the room right here when I ping. So flex all around the lower reaches of that rock. Get close enough, you can see that their teeth having been driven into the stone. There's nice. thin fangs, hefty molars, there's human teeth, animal teeth, etc. Wow. What are the size of the teeth? Uh, all Bam. different sizes from humans and animals, molars and fangs, etc. Uh, looking over them, you do spot a few of them that are gold or have gold inserts in them. Take them. You take those guys, and there are six of them in total worth two gold pieces each. You can hear kind of a rushing sound of a water as if it's falling down fast into something ahead in, head into your west. Hmm. Explore that way. You said six teeth at two gold each? Yep. Six teeth at two gold each. Do you want to go chasing that falling water? Kind of what we're doing, I think. Okay. So you get to where you can see it there, Badger. You guys can all move up behind Badger. Yep. You want to be and Malcor, come up. If you just go around that corner, Badger, I'll tell you what you see. So here, the water makes an exit from the tunnels. It um, it's burbling. It's still murky here, even though it's uh, flown quite a ways from where the first springs created it. And it empties into a dark tunnel in the floor. You can see some glittering objects skate by along the bottom. The tunnel that it goes down into is cramped and muddy. Uh, looks like you could follow it if you wanted to. So every now and then you see a glittering object go down the water and down in the falls. The tunnel you can follow. There's a staircase to the west. And let's go round by round here. So Badger, what would you like to do this way? I'm going to go up to here and I want to try and see get a closer look at the glints that are going by in the water. Okay. Roll a d20 for me, please. No. It looks like a piece of quartz goes floating by. 
the litters and the torchlight. Then we'll do Brom. <clears throat> Brom will do a move over by the steps and take take a look. Okay. Uh, when you get to the base of the steps, you can see a little bit further up them. They wind up and to the right, it looks like. Okay. And then Amriel. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Is this like a, a, a hole in the ground? Correct. A mighty hole in the ground? So it's like a very steep passage that kind of goes into the third dimension here into the into the screen it's muddy uh the water flows down it very rapidly as soon as it goes into that steep descent you could walk along it slide down it you might lose your footing here and there it's kind of cramped though so you can hold on to multiple walls as you go you see is there okay you see now and then some glittering objects flowing down the river heading down it and that's about it um and you said uh you described it as quartz, and it's it's of value, right? Potentially. Um, do we do we want to explore this? I'm I ask. I would go down, but I am not suited <laughs> for anything involving strength. Well, I am strong. Um, While you discuss that, fast Pete, what do you want to do? All right, I'm going to tie a rope around. Who was saying they were willing to go down? Uh, Badger did. No, Badger's strong, but I'm oh, gonna, he's gonna hold it. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna hold it, and Malcor is always willing. Uh, Malcor is gonna go down. Malcor, right. Malcor. the uh, brave, brave. That's the word brave, I was looking brave, for. Malcor. All right, Malcor. Uh, you find a tunnel that goes about 30, 40 feet. You, you see some light at the end of it, and it exits the hill uh, on the side of the hill in a river that flows away from the hill. So you have another so exit from way the place. Out. Yeah. Excellent. Does it look like you could slide down the hole without injury into the river? Uh, yes. You don't think you'd be too badly wounded. Hmm. All right. Uh, that was Malcor. So then come back to Badger. You're holding the rope. Now pull pull Malcor back up when he's ready okay. and tell him lucky he's not related. But... <laughs> to you, Brom. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it possible to try to grab one of the pieces of quartz? Yeah. Uh, roll d20. Blowing down the river. Yeah, roll d20. Just to see what it actually is. D20, gotcha. Okay, you reach in there. You pull out a little sliver of quartz that was flowing by. And you look it over, you know, turn it around, look it over closely. You don't think it's worth anything. All right. But but the things flowing by seem to vary in size and shape. Size. So the one you grab is not worth anything. You don't know if anything so else I think a be. larger one might be worth something. Not if it's just like this one. All right. Amriel, what do you want to do? Uh, I'll, I'll attempt the same. You know, I gotta buy a medicine for okay. June bug. Old D twenty. You fish out another worthless piece of quartz. Uh, quartz. Let's head to the west, gang. Okay. And then Malcor, you get climbed back up out of there, and you guys can come out of that uh, initiative. The end of that round, I'll roll for the monster, and then torch time. Time to light some more torches, and a good time for a break. So, let's okay. take a break until um. Let's see, it's 12 after, so let's do till 20, 25 after. Break till 25 after the hour. Okay, cool. And then we'll light up torches. Okay. You all light up another torch, pour more oil in your lantern, and you have until 25 after the next hour before that runs out. Then, leading the way, Badger, up the stairs, you see a big room opening ahead at the top of the steps. And once you move um, one more square ahead into the room, if you like, everyone else can move behind him wherever you want to be. Badger sees, uh, and you all see this large hall. Um, the place is cavernous, airy, damp wind wafts from the east up the tunnel that you guys just came up. The walls are pockmarked and rough with globs of mortar plopping down into sticky puddles by them. Um, to your left is a pool of starry black water that swirls and trum- trembles it's uh, got a purplish hue to it, and it's sparkling. Going back up to where you were uh, there. Um, <clears throat> everyone? Badger, you can back up. Yeah, there you go. And then Badger, as you take your first five feet into the room, there. Everyone move to where you want to be behind Badger. You see Badger something long and black and sinewy rise up out of the pool and pull up a larger thing into view. Um, nope. And... This is what you see. Oh, God. <clears throat> this primordial ooze rises out of the starry pool. You feel a strong will imposing itself upon all of you uh, to bring it f- 
food to eat. And I think you all to roll initiative real quick, too. It's not lashing out to attack. It's just like it's overwhelming your psyche just to be near it. I tell him I have a metal vial I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you roll for him. I think it's worthy. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Let's ask the stopper. Him? <laughs> okay. Uh, Badger. I would like you to roll a d6, and you don't roll a one, roll a one. Very good. So this overwhelming presence is telling you to bring it food to eat. And you feel almost compelled to do it, although you're resisting with all your will and you're able to resist. Uh, you still feel that overwhelming urge to go find something to feed it. What do you want, uh, Badger? Yeah, I'm inclined to, to take the trip back and go pick up one of the bodies. <laughs> all those dead bodies yeah. we passed. It's not too far. This thing wants to get fed. Let's feed it. Just hold that thought. Go ahead and take your go, go and take your move wherever you want to move to. It's n- 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 nothing's difficult terrain, uh, allies nor stairs. You can move your full speed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fast feet. You feel the same overwhelming presence. Roll a d6, please. Don't roll a one. You're good. You can take your actions as you like. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get that vial and uh, put it in a corpse. Do we get a sense of what this thing wants to eat? No, just the overwhelming sense to bring up food. Oh, uh, you, you, you really want to use it here? <laughs> Malcor. Uh, let's see. You're close <laughs> enough. Roll a d6, Malcor. Don't want to roll a 1. You're good. What do you want to do, Malcor? So, yeah, is this where we want to use the uh, potion thing? Well, Fast Feet has it, so... Oh, okay. Well, I'll move away from him. I'm not Fast Feet. Um, Badger. Oh, well, then I guess not. You can, uh, it's got a goblin name on it. it. Might be one of his siblings. He scrawled it on the, on the <laughs> side of the vial. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, uh, you can always have uh, I'll stop. move away for now. Move away, okay. Amriel, make it. With fentanyl. Make a d6 roll, Amriel. Eight, here we go. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Maybe, roll. I'm, maybe I'm too far away. Now, Amriel, roll a d4. Is there a, a good option out of here, or are they all bad? They're a lot of bad. A lot of mm-hmm. bad. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Roll a d20. Uh, a one is really, 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 really bad. A 20 is not so bad at all. Okay. Drama, drama, drama. <laughs> oh, that's really bad. Uh, Amriel, you lose a bone in your body. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, we're going to roll a d4. One, it's your left leg. Two, it's your right leg. Three, it's your left arm. Four, it's your right arm. Oh, my. Couldn't it be just like my tympanium in one ear? <laughs> That would have been if you rolled a 20. Okay. Uh, so I have to roll another d20? D4. Roll a d4. Okay, okay that's your okay. left arm. <laughs> so you lose a bone in your left arm. Roll a d6. One through four, it's your forearm. Uh, five or six, it's your upper arm. Okay, so one of you, So you're basically your left arm is paralyzed from the elbow down because you don't have the arm. You don't have the muscle that can twist it or turn it or you know anything like that. <clears throat> well, the five is the d6 roll, so same result? No, you're good. You're out. You're out. If you want to move away, you want to move away? Yeah. Okay, yes. you get away. Yeah, with your arm kind of just crippled by the thing. And Brom, right. roll a d6. I was gonna say, Gosh, you left me here by myself. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure this is where we should be using that uh, okay. file. But... You get away. You guys get away. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you're back into like Area 23 out of, out of the sight of Mugdol Blub. Uh, you you felt just, a, just an otherworldly presence. Um, you still were able to retain your own self-will. And get away. Uh, you know it wants yeah. to be fed. You know getting near it uh-huh. is just uh, chaotic as all get out, and horrible things were happening to your insides and stuff. And, and this poor Amriel has. Stopper pre- say anything? He's like, hey, stopper, can we pour you on mug, double blub, or whatever that uh, thing was? Or it doesn't know. Uh, I would expunge it from existence. How big is it? We're pretty big. Oh. It's as big. It's, it's, it's like bigger a than a horse. Well, I expunge a lot of it from existence then. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out this thing will expunge something that's like a human size. Uh, but it'd likely do a lot of damage to something that's bigger than human size. I think so. <clears throat> I, I, I want revenge. I mean, I think this is why we're here. You want your little bone back. Well, you're here to get treasure. You get XP for to get treasure. True. Remember, Shadow Dark's that's not about true. killing bad, big bad yeah. things. It's about avoiding yeah. them while you get their treasure. <laughs> Yeah, my, my predilection is to avoid the shit out of what we just saw. All right. Well, maybe there's some treasure inside of it. It's possible, but it's a long journey. All right. 
What do, we want, do we want to go head towards those skeletons we ran into? <clears throat> you think also, uh, considering how it came out of the starry pool and you had, you know, you were carefully coming into the room and such, you could, you believe, quickly cross Run the back. room and it, you might beat it coming out of that pool. Uh, so that's also an option for you as well. It's a perfect plan. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong. Huh? So Amriel's got a third eye. Because Amriel got the third eye, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Amriel's got right. a third eye and a paralyzed no, left no. forearm. Amriel does not have the third eye. <laughs> oh, it wasn't. Um, oh, no, that's right. It was the halfling. The halfling got the third eye. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. Tucker? Yeah, Tucker. Yeah. Tucker. Tucker got the third eye. Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell you, uh, you guys who haven't been here before, this place will change a man <laughs> or one. <laughs> So yeah, you can go back the way you came. You can go to that cavern you saw along the river. You can try and cross Mugdolblub's chamber fast. You can try and confront Mugdolblub. Lots of choices. <laughs> um, well, it, it seems like throwing a body at it isn't going to satisfy it because it's Probably just going to take pieces of us. So well, well, maybe if you bring a body, it won't take pieces though. So okay, uh, let's go grab a halfling body. They'll be easy to talk. <laughs> so. Do we need need me to move back there? Nope. You can just say you went back and grabbed one of the ones that you saw before and brought it back. Yeah. And then from the edge the here, uh, I will toss the body towards the water with my reasonably impressive strength. Okay. Um, you throw the body into the chamber, and you can feel the presence building uh, becoming overwhelming. Feels like you don't want to stay and watch. Yeah. Um, and then you hear some slurping noises and some sliding noises and water rippling noises and then you feel like uh you did a good job <laughs> you're a good little uh creature yeah that's and always you can come back someday and when you go back and peek around the corner again after a little bit of time uh the starry pool is still nice maybe we placated muggle bub for a while mm -hmm. oh, yeah. so yeah we got through that pretty easy nothing important lost what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got, Look at my you got, arm. You, have, you only you only really need one arm. <laughs> You're a wizard. You can still point and shoot. Now, the other one's just for holding the lantern. It can just kind of hang a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh God. Okay. There's two ways out. Uh, stairs going down in both directions. Uh, nothing else down around here. No, nothing else in the chamber itself. Um, no, it's cavernous, it's airy, damp winds waft from the stairs, uh, globs of mortar plop down onto sticky puddles, but nothing that you can see of uh, value. All right, down the stairs, let's go make a mess. We don't need any of your spells, right, guys? Nah, I still got cure wounds, that's the important one. Yeah. Okay, I long hallway, dead. and go and move to the end if you like, Badger. Melkor, you're going to be left in the dark with this thing. <laughs> Uh, you see another flight of stairs heading down, Badger. When you get to the edge of them, you can see they come to a four-way intersection down below, it looks like. When you get to the intersection oh, hey. down below, yeah. Uh, it's back up to there. Yeah, perfect. Uh, back up one stair. Step. There you go. Okay. So just as you're peeking around the corner, you know, looking to the north, looking to the south, you see a doorway to the north. To the south, you see some creatures um, look like bitter molds who, you know, must have seen your light coming. And therefore, we're not surprised by your approach. Let's see what they're doing here. Um, they're hunched, pale humans with lank hair. They have a uh, sticks. One of them is poking a stick through the the bars of a cell that you can see right um, just due south of the four-way intersection. I'm gonna move just for the sure. sake of lighting. And in the cell is one of the howler halflings that uh, you guys have been semi-allied with. Mm. Um, the bars are rusted. They look like they have a lock on them, and there's a couple of those um, bitter molds here, and they immediately attack when they see you guys. So you guys can move up all into position. Once you're happy where you're at, you can roll initiative. Should I move back? Yeah, go ahead and move back. Roll for the bitter molds. Everyone go and roll your initiative again. First to go is fast feet. So fast feet, you know, uh, around that corner, um, past Brom, there'll be some bitter molds, or past a badger. Oh, but you can't see because it's dark down there. So as soon as Badger moves, you can move into position and ready a bow shot if you like. Oh, I'm not. I'm talking on nothing. Yeah, that's what I want to do. That's what you do. Okay. Badger, your turn. Move to there. You're going to take your shot. Comes. There oh. we go. Ooh. Ooh uh, yeah. Four points of piercing in the front bitter mold. What else, Badger? Uh, I will finish my move to here. Oh, hi, guys. All right. So you're 
in the chamber here, you got four of these pun these hunched pale humanoids with lank hair staring at you. You got the rusty cells with doors shut. Uh, two of the half things in those cells. Um, let me let me ask the question. Um, in this, do we get to split our move? Can I attack and move back? Correct. You can. Okay, and I'm gonna sw- swat at this guy and then step back into the hall. Okay. So fourteen for 14 two. Fourteen for two slashing. Okay, got it. And then back. All right. Uh, After your turn, the bitter molds go. Uh, it runs. One, two, three, four, six. There. This one's gonna run for it. There. These two. There. All right. They run for their lives from you guys. Uh, Malcor, your turn. Oh, let me go grab oh. a skeleton too. Yeah. He'll go right after you, so you can take your action and then command. So they, they're running away, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So if you get to the four-way intersection and then go south, that's where they used to be, and they ran to the west. Okay. Um, I'll double move, I guess. Each of the then... howlers that you see are behind rusty uh, iron bars with a lock on. Can I? Can the skeleton open? Uh, you command it to. Okay. Yeah. Five, six, seven, ten. Goes there and tries to open. It double moved it. Uh, it tries to open it, but it's locked, so it can, with an action next round, try more. All right. Rom, your turn. So I move up to the intersection there. Um, I heard everything. You said they ran west? They ran like west, up, yeah. This way? Or? Yeah, west, out of the room. Okay. I think maybe they might... I don't know if they're going to come back up this up from this direction. So I'm going to stand right here as kind of a blocker uh, if they come that way. Okay. But I'll cast Shield of Faith on myself to give myself a better armor class. Go for it. I hope I don't offend my deity again. Oh, you did not, at least. Amriel, go ahead. Amriel moves up. uh, Get a kind of a better feel for the situation. Okay, we got people in all directions. They Um, were were to the south from the intersection, in a room to the south, and they ran west. Okay, I'm going to cast the mage armor. Okay. After Amriel. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Fast feet, your turn. Yeah, our magic is not working today. (laughs) <laughs> I'll follow down and try and unlock that um, cage. Okay. Uh, locked bars, pick lock, 15 dex check, which you have advantage on. Ooh, nice. nice. You made it. made it. Nicely done, fast feet. So that is unlocked. I'll add him to the initiative next round. Uh, Badger, turn. I will get him out, boys. I'll be ready here. Okay, you see I'll one uh, hiding around the corner, kind of peeking at you to the north. Uh, you moved there, readied? I move to there and ready and, and uh, yeah, call to him. Come on, you chicken. Uh, he peeks at you and then quickly runs across the opening to the south. And you hear him, like, run and, uh, like, that's like this scuffling sound and, like, a dull thud. It's almost like he ran and ran into a wall almost. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, you ran that direction. Malcor. I'll step forward and try to open that. Door. With a, okay, it's, it's a little locked. You want to try and break it? Or pick it. Uh, I'll say break it because I got better strength than Dex. Okay, make a strength check. Turns out with these rusted bars, it's only a 12 strength check. Harder to pick it than it is to just break. But you're not able to break it. All right. Then can I ask my skeleton to do the same? Or the skeleton? Yeah. He comes over to your side, makes a strength check to break open the bars, fails. Oh, uh, wrong. Oh, and now that you got the bars open fast feet, you see the howler that turns around, looks at you, has manacles on his wrists. Also locked. How dangerous are these are guys? They, wow. <laughs> are they to the wall or just manacled? Uh, just manacled. Um, just manacled. He could come out. I'll come down and try to break open. Okay, straight check. You do. You break that one open. Uh, then Amriel, your turn. For free. After Amriel. You might be muted if you're talking. There you go. Oh, I was on mute, but she's writing a sleep spell. Okay, these two howlers join the fight. You can see they're howling mad like they often are. Uh, and fast feet. You go first. Uh, they're we both manacled, but they can both move. Manacles off? Yeah, a DC lot. 18, no, 15 to pick it. DC 15 to pick it. Awesome. No that one's freed. Nice. That one is freed. <laughs> the other one, I'll just put the grapple thing on him so we know he's not. After fast feet comes, the one you just freed, he rushes forward with a ululating cry that echoes through the tunnels of the uh, halls of Mugdol Blood. Goes rushing oh, forward. Solved one, my rumor. Two, three, four, five, six... You see him get to the opening, and then ping, 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 three sling bullets come his way. Uh, first one misses, second one strikes him on the temple, staggers him a little bit. That just gets him madder. The third one cracks him in the temple again, get him even madder. And then he uh, makes a wisdom check to make sure, yeah, oh yeah, he gets going straight ahead. 
One, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then his ululating cry kind of comes to a, a, not an abrupt end, but like a, hmm, <laughs> like a, not a gurgling end even, just like a surprised end. That's yeah. it for him. Badger, your turn. Uh, yeah. So I kind of want to know. One, <laughs> two, three. Okay. So he is up to his waist in quicksand. Oh, and cool. you see uh, three bitter molds who have just unloosed uh, sling bullets at him in the far end of the chamber. And one just around the corner, getting ready to stab him with a short sword, but hasn't done it yet. Okay, so that was three moves, four, five, grab him. Okay. The one with the short sword is going to try and stab at you when you arrive, um, hitting for two piercing. Uh, Luckily, I am not resistant to piercing. Then, to get someone out of the quicksand floor, quicksand, ground is very smooth, Um, your choice... No, it'll be a strength check, DC 12, to pull him out. Oh! oh you don't get him out. And what's worse is you, now that you're close, smell the smell of burning flesh. Like this quicksand is also burning his skin. Oh, no. Yikes. Yeah. Anything else, Badger? Uh, do I still have my action? Uh, that, I, was no, a... that was your action to run and pull him out. All right. Um, I still have one... Uh space of movement i'm gonna back off i tried <laughs> his what, brother what what updates the seven on the on the bar because i've adjusted my hit points in the the circle but it doesn't seem to update huh i'm seeing it updated huh it's weird visible to everyone five out of seven hit points on bar three maybe you might need to reload is anyone else okay. see, well no one else can see this if i move his token to where you can see it let me move it do you guys see him at yeah, five, five out of seven yeah i see five seven yeah. okay Weird. Okay, I'll reload while you guys take your turns. All right, then another howler, manacled still. Here's the ululating cry of his brother and takes off rushing to help. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sees the desperate situation his brother's in. Seven, eight, nine. Gets to there, wraps his manacle chain around his brother's neck and pulls for all his might. <laughs> then the better molds. They have the all of you right where they want you. Uh, they shoot sling bullets at uh, the one with the manacles first. Uh, sling. 13's a hit for two, and 19's a hit for one, so he's cracked twice for three damage. And then uh, the one's in blue, another sling bullet towards him. 10 is a miss, he dodges the 10. And then the guy with the sword tries to stab him with it. Oh, Does, and runs him oh, through. Dang. Was he, because he tried to attack me too. Was that a ready? It was oh, no, ready. Yeah, it was ready. Okay. Okay, uh, so they're all done. M- his brother's burning alive in the quicksand. Malcor, your turn. Uh, Malcor will move forward. Oh, you can uh, from there. You can peek around the corner, so you can move yourself one more square and then back, okay. just to get a view of what you see down there. Okay. Uh, whenever you guys are in that situation, feel free to do that. Uh, you can always peek around a corner. So even if you can't make it to the edge, you can you can also move your token and hold down the Alt key and drop it in a spot that's around the corner where you can see. Just remember to move back when you're done looking. Oh, man. Okay, I'll stay here. Let's see what's up here. Mm. Oh, shoot. Double move up here. Uh, to the north there is um, just one cell. Oh, no, it's dark for there for you, so you don't see what's in the room. Yeah. Okay, well, the, um, room, the room's pretty sparse. It's just stone. Uh, nothing of any note. I'll ask the uh, skeleton to go here. Okay. And then... Ready. Oh, I don't know. How many movement is that? Want to go behind Badger and attack anything that comes? Yes. It does. And then or tell everybody to back up, up behind the skeleton. Amriel, your turn. You can do the same trick, right. Amriel, where you look, but then move back, because you can peek around the corner. One, okay. Two, three, you can even shoot around right. the corner. All right. So I'll actually be moving three, but I'm going to move here so I can see. Um, <clears throat> you can oh, shoot the of... ones that are straight south or to the west. You can't shoot the other ones around the corner. All right. It's still a pretty target-rich environment. Um, I'm going to... Any of these... Are either of these two damaged? No. This one or don't this see one? any wounds on any of them, no. All right. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, wait. Yeah, you missile. do. The one in the far end of the chamber uh, is wounded. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to ma- magic missile that one. All right. Um, here we go. That's a hit for uh, two force and finishes it. All right. And I'll back off to here. Rom, your turn. Don't. I'll go up here uh, and peer around the corner to the south. <clears throat> and what I'll do is uh, do my grappling hook trick and try to grab the halfling and pull him back. All right. 
Uh, makes a dex check, DC 10. See if you land it near him. Ah. Oh, no. <laughs> he gets snagged on Badger dead. Shield. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I'm trying to take the kid. <laughs> After Bomb, that runs over fast feet. Your turn. Okay. Just down here and shooting. Ooh, a 13 on one of the bitter molds. Uh, but the arrow just kind of bounces off their rubbery flesh, unfortunately. Oh, uh, okay. After fast feet. Uh, your howler friend, um, he burns alive. His screaming stops with a gurgle, and he's dead. Badger. Looking uh, from where you're at, Badger, the quicksand appears to extend um, where I put that red circle. Nice. So now you think you understand what you heard was one of them jumping across it and hitting the wall on the far side. I'm going to move to here and attack the one that ran the halfway okay. through. Go for it. 11. Uh, I think that misses. 11 misses. Um, and then I'm going to retreat. After one, Badger. Two, Go. Um, okay, so the two to the south there, or one to one right now is going to hurl a sling stone at the skeleton. Missing it. And then two more sling stone, or one more sling stone is coming at the skeleton. So you see your skeleton get struck by a rock for three damage. And then the other guy will ready. Then, now for your turn. Oof. Uh, I'm, we're retreating, right? Oh, now that the room's lit up with Badger in there, let me describe what you see in that room. So, it's mostly empty, but there is a rusty cell in that alcove to the west, with the same rusty iron bars as in the other cells that you've seen. The door here, however, is hanging open, and in the cell, there is some manacles lying on the ground, and scratched into the mushy stone are the following letters. Type them here. That is scratched into the stone. And that's it. That's what you see. Of course. The club will dissolve all. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's yeah. not good. Uh, uh, Mug or uh, Malcor will. A... Maybe it's a pass. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. What do you want to do, Malcor? Malcor. Start heading. So it's a dead end, right? The west way. This way. The west way. Yeah, it's just a cell. Okay. Yeah. Then Malcor will start heading east. Stop there and. Uh, Order the skeleton to follow me. He comes following after you. And then, Amriel, your turn. Hey, I'm going to step here to see where things are. Okay, so we still have opponents to the south, but people are going to the north. Is that what I'm gathering here? Yeah. Okay. Unless we want to try to pick off. I don't have a ranged weapon, so I don't. Uh, okay, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'll uh, aim a uh, magic missile at uh, this guy. Uh, so. Ooh, oh, three, three force. You have advantage. Oh, also. I have advantage. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, advantage. All right, then I'm gonna just uh, move back here, and I'm done. Your turn, bro. Um, oh, peek around the corner and, and uh, sh yeah, shoot the same guy. Hey, a crit. Unfortunately, you don't nice. see him, right? It's all dark down there. Oh, is it? I think so. Yeah. Oh, you should I'm not terrible. see. Let me double check. Oh yeah, I don't see it. Oh, I think on my screen the light went the other way. Uh, then. If I can't see, I'll follow where everybody's going. We're going to the north and to the east. Is that correct? Huh. Correct. <clears throat> so go. To, you don't want to shoot. You just want to move. Yeah. If I can't see, I'm just gonna got to uh, move. Go ahead and move where you want. Then um, next after wait, you. Can, can I have like left like be hanging my torch out around the corner so that they can see down there? Uh, while well, you're coming up next, so you can do it as soon as your turn comes. My token came. I can't. I can't do anything. Your token can't. It. It's. It's like everything's. I can. The die the roll twenty is kind of dimmed, and I see my token. My token. Is oh, cl size. Um, click off the take, click on anywhere on the screen. See if you can make that go away. Oh, okay. Good. Then you can do it. Uh, I'll move up here. There you go. Okay. Start following. Fast feet. Say, Badger, shine a light down there, and I'll fire once more. <laughs> Ready to shot? Badger, go ahead. I will move here to shine the light down there. Twelve. That should hit for four. Nice. Two. That drops it. Good job. What else, Badger? Um, I'm going to move to here, but I'm going to reach my arm out and hold the torch so it's pointing down the hallway so that it, it still lights up, even though I'm undercover. Okay. There's a torch for you. Um, Great. After Badger comes their turn. Um, does that actually shed light? Because I don't see it. Does it? It's for me. Okay. It does. Good you can't tell because you're in light, so right. your light's shining everything it shines on. Um, okay, so it will... Or the bitter molds will move to their virus thing stone at fast feet. 
I don't like tank in here, guys. Yeah, it's 11. I think that's a miss on fast feet, barely. And then... 12? Yep, Run it's a away! Miss. The other guy stays readied. And Malcor, your turn. Uh, move forward. Oh, I can't see anything. So I'll stay here. Emriel, your turn. I move forward. Oh, that one guy moved. My favorite target. <laughs> well, um, he's there. He's just lying on the floor dead. Oh, perfect. I'm going to shoot at uh, this guy then. Okay. Mm, hit for one. Uh, hit for nice one. Nice having um, that advantage. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm going to move up since people can't are having problems seeing. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, do you want to do the same it. thing where you leave your lantern on the floor? Uh, yeah, I, I can just set it on the floor and... It should be easy to pick up. Fix that lantern so it's going 60 feet. Should light some stuff up for you. Okay, deal. Um, after Amriel, Rom. I'm going to see if I can see anything down that way. I don't think I can. You can. If you move into the square, should be able to, I think. Two of them to the left, uh, right on the screen, left from your vantage point. Mm -hmm. well, I don't, yeah, I don't see anything. Huh. For some reason, I can't get to the character view. Sure. Double check your token, make sure you got vision on, yeah. And they're in the light. So there should be one if I ping it right here, another one if I ping it right here. Oh. You can see the edge of. Yeah, I can barely see the edge of, yep. but uh yeah, that's not good. I'll uh, uh but I don't know that I can see I can't I have to stay in the square to shoot my crossbow, so You do? You I don't have to. Well, I it takes my move action to load it. Oh, got it. Okay. So no, so, you cannot. You can load it, move yeah. to where you can see him and fire it next round. All right, I I'll load it. We'll do. Yep. Okay, that runs over. Fast feet, your turn. Hey, okay, fast feet will fire his la a last arrow before getting out of here. Ooh, nice two shot. For another four. Another two to that guy. Twenty-four. And then move where you like. And I'm getting out. Of All right, after fast feet, badger. I'm gonna move. <laughs> Look at badger go. And then step into the hallway here and ready. Okay. In case I get arms barreling down. And you have no light, right? Or did you grab your torch on the way by? I do not grab my torch, but I think I have, like, dark vision or whatever. Uh, I'm no, still... no dark vision in this game. Oh, really? Yeah. Nothing has dark vision. Except the enemies, all, right. all the monsters. Do. Yeah, except the bad guys. <laughs> all right. Then I'm just going to run back to where I was. I thought I would be able to see. I mean, you can see because there's plenty of light around you, right? I can't see a thing right now. Oh, I turned off your vision, not your light. <laughs> now you can see. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah. Is there already? Yeah. All right. A bitter mold. Going to fire at Braum with the sling. Missed him. And try and duck behind some cover over there, and then the other bitter mold's doing that. And then Malcor, your turn. Uh, let's see, one, two, three. Move. One, two, three. Over here, see where I can see. Nothing. Mm. Where is everybody? All right, I'll move back, and I guess we're retreating, so I'll just stay here. Skeleton will stand by you. Leave the skeleton there. Oh, Emriel, your turn. All right. Um, one. Okay, she can see her friend over here. So she's going to cast Magic Missile at it. Come on. What's going on? I can't. The, uh, oh, it's because oh, you know, you're in the um, same thing as those light sources. So I'll move them out of yeah, your way, and you'll be good to go. There we go. Cool. Right. Uh, four force. Nice. You dropped it. Nice. Only one left down there, you think? Well, and we... I've got enough movement, so I'd like to put that lantern up in bronze space. Okay. On... <laughs> uh, not my eyes. <laughs> After Amriel Brom. So you're loaded. You see one hiding around the corner there. You can still yep. shoot him. What's its MO band? It doesn't step out into the quicksand, I'm assuming. So It hasn't, no. no. All right, I'll try to shoot it. Uh, it's been stabbing at people that are getting close with a sword. Do you think it's got a sword in its hand, probably? I see. Yeah, so that's not the one with the sling, right? Right. All right, I'll give it a shot. Mm, just missed. Okay, after Brom comes fast feet. Yes, um, are we going to finish this guy? So I'm going to finish back. him. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. That Ooh, rubbery dissolved Ooh, miss missed. Badger, your turn. All right, move to here. Move to here. Get the torch. Move back to here. All right. Keep it going. After Badger, they go. This guy. He is going to go. Uh, you hear him moving. One, two, three, four, six. He runs up the stairs. He's done. And then Malcor, your turn. Uh, move first. One, two, three, four. Which way did the... Oh, I guess I wouldn't know. Ran south, up the stairs, past that uh, quicksand. Oh. Hmm. Do we know a way past the... Can I jump over the quicksand, or how yeah. is that? Yeah, you can jump over it. One, two... Well, I'll move here and stop, because I don't have enough movement, and have my skeleton follow me. Then Amriel, your turn. All right. Uh, I'm going to peek her, 
Go around the corner again. Oh, yep. I can't see anyone now. Ran south up the stairs. Okay. Um, I I think I heard Badger was going to the south, so I'm gonna go and grab my lantern okay. uh, from. I think you from, still have uh, light on you. I'll I'll put it back on you if you don't. You do. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm gonna uh, double move. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 12. As soon as you get to the base oh. of the stairs, you can kind of see the scope of how far they go. Up and to the left, you don't see the person anymore. Okay. Um, all right. I, uh, I'm i going to just duck around the corner here. Um, and I don't see Badger, but that's not my problem. Your turn, problem. Uh, <clears throat> are we going to give chase, really, this far? Do you think? We should. We should. I think we should uh, uh, search this room. And uh, yes, let's 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 uh, stabilize this area, search the areas we've been in, and uh, and then decide a direction. Okay. If anyone wants to chase, regardless, you can move your guy all the way south. Otherwise, I'll tell you what's in the room. In the room, in the rusty cell to the west of the quicksand, there's iron bars, and the door is shut. There's a lumpy shape inside. A lumpy shape. Okay. Lumpy shape inside that cell to the west. Getting close enough that you did badger, you see that it's a goopy, rotted skeleton in scraps of purple robes sagging uh, against the wall. Uh, the the cell's purple. shut and locked. Do the people, purple robes mean anything to us? Mm, not specifically, no. Well, it's indicative of the purple starry liquid we saw and the first witch kind of... Um, turned in i think she turned into a purple ooze or she she had like purple uh stains oh, yeah. on her lips yeah yep yeah, that seems to be the color of the bitter mold in their leaders is it um a single thing or is it just a pile of uck it is a goopy rotted skeleton uh so it's kind of got some bones they're kind of goopy um it's slumped against the wall there's manacles where its arms and hands once were, and it's in scraps of purple robes. I, I bet it up. has... Good. I bet it has... I bet it has treasure. <laughs> well, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. It might have an upper arm bone, too. That's going to be some advanced surgery. <laughs> um, I'm inclined to search it, so I'm going to poke at it through the bars. Okay. As soon as you touch the form, a willowy blue translucent person stands up as if coming from where the bones were, uh, like a ghostly form. Um, they're thin, they're human, they're dressed in robes, like the robes you see on the ground there below them. And they say, I am Jakku, the polyglot. Who are you? I am Badger Pettibone of House Mudder. Seventh in line to the throne. You what have service? Quite the vocabulary for a goblin. My upbringing included a lot of uh, reading and learning the finer things of diplomacy. Well, given your noble background, you should look for the crypt of the bitter molds. It lies down in these caverns, beyond an illusory wall, in a ca cave that you can only reach via a river uh further then, down the stairs here and then the spirit disappears no i think i, I, think I know where it's talking about the, earlier on there was uh, a cave that was further down the river that we could see but we didn't go that way right. yeah could be or it could be further ahead well you didn't pass an illusory wall so no it's true as far well, as we'd have to act actively search to find an illusory wall right or yep. just in the habit of running into walls that's what ten foot poles are for. That's you. <laughs> you find uh, nothing else in the chamber. Uh, there's no treasure with them, unfortunately. All right. All right. So from here, where do you want to go? <laughs> uh, are you guys wanting to back off or keep pressing? Keep pressing. Right. Yeah, keep pressing. Yeah, you can always back up. Keep so pressing. from where you're at, you could go north from the four-way intersection where the there was a door. You can go back into the caverns to that cave that uh, Amriel remembers. Which would you prefer? Oh, I, the, so this staircase doesn't go anywhere where they fled? Uh, yeah, you can follow that staircase. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, let's, let's, do do that. Go. let's do that first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Back off to the you get up around the corner. You can see that the staircase goes up. 
You can go to the corner if you want, bro. It's all dark for me. Like there's something. Oh, here's your torch. Oh, yeah. Right. Let me put your torch back on you. You have bright light. Save. Torch. Okay, when you get to the top of the stairs, you see uh, this. Um, everyone can move right behind Badger. Oh, hi. You see your uh, quarry right. kneeling in supplication as uh, your friend, the ooze, gently caresses wow. its form. Uh, and as it like brushes its tentacle across the uh, bitter molds, flesh, you can see the flesh kind of sloof off of it. And the bitter molds just l- like prone and frozen in supplication and, and worship of this thing. And this thing is consuming it and dissolving it as you look upon it. It's disgusting. It's horrendous. You feel, you know, the pit of your stomach um, welling up. It doesn't seem to have noticed you as you peeked in on it and its uh, doings. What do you want to do from there, Badger? Uh, I think we're back out. Okay. Go back you out guys quickly we... back down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing to see here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can count that as one of our kills. <laughs> All right. Now, you could yeah, yeah. go to the door to the north, wait a little while, and try and cross Mugdoblub's room again and go to the cave Amriel remembers to the east. I'm going to the door. Yeah, do that. Follow up the clue. You guys want to follow the clue or go to the door? You're gonna have to like I would drag, say follow the clue. You have to drag Badger away from the door if you all vote for the following the clue. Yeah. Which, <laughs> okay. Which... So you got Badger talked door. into it. Looks like uh, you wait a little while. You give it a ten minute wait or something like that, hoping that Mugdal Blood will not be there when you come back up. Indeed, he's not there when you come back up. You rush across the chamber. Uh, I'll move you, Malcor, since you're since uh, Betty Bones. Why don't you go to the cave where the water spills out to the chamber? So I'll put you all there. There you go. So you know that that river goes past a um, past a hidden chamber to the northeast. Uh, you'd be flowing against the current, and of course you could tumble down into the the vertical shaft there, or you could circle back around to the other side, where you'd be going with the current to get to the cave. Which would you? Prefer? Yeah, go around and, and with the current. Use the current. Mm-hmm. Okay. There. Let's see if you have any monster encounters on the way there. Nope. You're good. All right. Then you can wade through the river. And to the next chamber. So when you get to that chamber, uh, that's there. You can just keep on moving forward there. This cave is streaked with red and purple minerals. There's trickles of water that leave white salt trails that flow down the walls. Uh, the river is turbid and charges past the chamber with uh, small waterfalls ahead. So you jump out of it just as you get to the chamber. Um, Start poking the wall with the torch. There's a faint breeze coming. You can see your torch flicker as you get to the northwest quadrant. And you can also smell dust and decay. And if you touch it, you can see that it is indeed illusory. Cool. And you can basically walk right through it. Well, there we go. There you go. <clears throat> and then it comes into chamber at the end. You see in this chamber, you can all move up next to... Uh, actually, I'll just move into the chamber so you can all see it, although you're not stepping in it yet. I just want, want you to be able to see what you see. And I'll move you back after I describe it, if you have anything bad happen. You see in the chamber six dusty coffins standing upright, each gripped by tarnished brass claws that are driven into the stone. The coffins are dust-covered. They have green-hued glass covers, uh, but the dust is so so heavy you can't see what's through the glass. Um, okay. We should um, relate our... Light sources, they're almost out. Yeah, good timing. Now you got five minutes. You want to light up new ones? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you have until one twenty. This is this my week. last last flask of oil. All right. Yeah, torch I've got. So uh, I have two. I have one in reserve as well. Here. I'm gonna try and wipe clean one of the. I'll, I'll start with the first one on the right up here. Try okay. and wipe the glass. Okay. Inside is a woman, um, in a, a dead woman, a, a corpse, floating in some sort of preservative. You think? Um, there's no real latch or anything on the glass. It seems to be sealed in place. You might be able to like get your fingers underneath it and, and rip it free. Uh, of course, you could break it. You think easily enough? Um, yeah, I'll that's, try. that's what you see. I'll try and pry it open. Uh, all right. Make a roll a d6 and don't roll a one. You pry it open. The glass with a uh, 
like a ripping noise comes loose, the sealant breaks free of the sealant, and the preservative fluid, which smells horrendous, uh, puddles all around the room and gets your feet wet, and the corpse falls to the ground with a thud. Um, you don't recognize who it is, although its features look somewhat like the bitter molds. It has no treasure or anything on it. Looks to have been a young woman, uh, maybe in her early 20s. Okay. Does this look to be before the transformation of this bitter molds into what they are now? Yeah, she's definitely much more human looking. Uh, I'll try the next one. All right. Another young woman, similar to the first. You want to open it? Yeah. All right. Uh, make a d6 roll. All right. Uh, again, no treasure. She comes out on the floor. I'm feeling lucky. All right. That one is an older woman, maybe in her 40s or 50s, wearing a gold necklace with a ruby and gold eye pendant on it. Uh, nothing else of note. I'll uh, try and indicate everyone should get ready. Okay. Because I got a bad feeling about mm-hmm. this. One. I'll have my holy symbol ready. Okay. <laughs> uh, magic pistols ready. Roll a d6. Oh. <laughs> oh Roll no. initiative, everyone. Oh, there no. We go. Let me clear these first. Uh, okay, now roll initiative. Oh, sorry. You're good. You can keep the five, Badger. All right. Yeah, doesn't matter. <clears throat> oh. The woman uh, screams of rage as you uh, pry open in the opening. Her eyes open up, and there's, like, cold, glowing blue light coming from them. And uh, she tries to swat at Badger with her bare hand. Uh, but fast feet, you're first before she can get to Badger. What do you want to do? Okay, well, I am going to shoot at her. That, uh, that is a mere 10. A 10 is a miss. Um, Malcor, your turn. Uh... Oh, and you can't go in that alcove. Uh, there's, or that one. They're, they all have coffins in them. The two to the north, okay. uh, you could go into the coffin if you want, because they've been open so far. Okay, Malcor. Malcor will move. Oh, can't move for some There we go. Um, if I turned undead from here, would it be able to see my holy symbol? Yeah. Okay. Can I Shield hold your own. that? Yeah. And then, yeah, so I don't mm-hmm. turn the skeleton? Okay. Yeah. And then I'll try to turn undead on this. Go for it. Dang. Oh, All right. nicely done. 21. 21. Uh, you present your holy symbol to the undead creature. It's going to make a charisma check versus your 21 check or flee. Or destroy if it fails by 10. So if it gets an 11 or less, you destroy it. It's a charisma check. 10. Oh! She is burned <laughs> up. The <laughs> undead is done. burned to a cinder, and only <sighs> the uh, necklace falls to the floor and remains. All right. I'm going to keep you around. Heck Nicely yeah. done, Malcor. <laughs> nice. All right. Job. Now we want to do Badger. Uh, there's nothing oh. else in that coffin. I will pick up the uh, necklace. Okay. Who does it? Not Anything magical. Like- Not magical, uh, but worth probably about 40 gold, you'd say. All right. Okay. Um, move on. Yeah, move on. Next one. Right. This one is a man, maybe in his 40s or 50s, uh, with um, a similar golden necklace with ruby and gold eye pendant on. And disconcertingly, he's got seven fingers on each of his hands. Oh, my. Oh, wow. He, yeah. He, he started to mutate already, maybe. It's generated by AI. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do, Badger? I will o- open the casket of the Bahalidactyl. All right, roll a d6. Good. Okay, uh, the body falls to the floor with a rather rubbery um, uh, sound when it hits the ground, similar to those other bitter molds that you know uh-huh. they kind of heal up piercing damage or don't aren't pierced as easily. Um, so this you would guess would be the patriarch of the family and maybe the first one to have started changing. But he's well and dead right now. Okay. Well and yeah. dead. Not well dead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any any signet rings or other jewelry on him? Uh just that necklace. So the gold necklace, another forty gold. All right. Slide around to here. Uh the south one there is a male in his early twenties. No treasure that you can see on him. Damn it. No okay. pick up where you want to be and roll initiative everyone. Oops. Oh, no. Oh, no. We got your initiative in. Okay. Amriel, you're first. Uh, well, I don't have any fancy turn on dead, but I do have magic missile, and now I'm going to use it. You hit for... You hit it for one. One. Well, you don't hit. You cast success successfully. Oh, Badger, we knew you so well. Uh, <laughs> 
All right. Oh. He doesn't have his bastard sword, luckily for you, but he does have his life drain. Um, 13 to hit, Badger. 13 is my AC. Uh, two con damage. Ooh. So your con comes down to 12. You lose one hit point because of that. So you can lower your hit point down to four out of six now. And uh, your con's now 12. Brom, your turn. <clears throat> Brom will hold forth his holy symbol of uh, St. Dragnus and try to turn this terrible creature to 12. Nice. So successful. And it's got to roll a 12 to resist it. Yes. Please roll two. Ten. You oh, got him. You got nice him. His turn. So he basically is cowering in the cell there. Um, he can't really flee from you, so he's cowering there. Uh, you think you could put the cover back on, Badger? Maybe uh, you could attack, but you're not sure he won't fight back. Maybe with right. some disadvantage. Uh, so that's problem. Fast feet. Fast feet. Unlike unlike five uh, e, I don't think taking damage stops a turn. But let me double check. It is supposed to be say that in the spell, but it doesn't not, does not say it. I don't think it does. I think you're. Good to attack them. Please oh. from you for five rounds. Yeah. All right, then I'll attack it. Go for it. Bat. Teen to hit. Thirteen. Missed the thing. Uh, Batcher. I'm going to try and hit it. The long sword. So drop the torch, try the long sword, stick it for three. Hit for three. It is, you think, impervious to your iron long sword. Iron non magic oh. long sword. Uh-oh. And I will back off. Yeah. Uh, Malcor. I'll try to turn it. Okay. See Again, trying to see protect turn it up. Yeah. Skeleton. Wow. Yes. 21. Again. 21. Man. Here's my check. Nice. Yes. 11. 11. You got him. Failed by 10. Burned him up. <laughs> All right. Oh. Who's, your, uh, who's your deed again, Malcor? Deed. <laughs> no, deed. No, oh, yeah. no treasure there. Uh, oh. And the last one is another young man. Anybody got a problem with me opening the last one? No. Nope. Yeah, might as well. No. Clear it out. No, let's nice. just, uh, clear them. Okay. So you got. Oh, did that last one have a, a neck- no. necklace? No. So you got two no. necklaces, or any each with gold pendants. You have um, this uh, patriarch with his rubbery body and his five, seven fingers. And mm. that is it. Is there a value in taking his body out of here? Uh, I, I was going to suggest that we put them in a stack and then I can burn them up. I, I just don't want to risk these guys coming back. So I have a thought. If- Take the hand. If the vial I have removes somebody from existence, and this guy was the start of it all, if we remove him from existence, would it remove the mutations and everything? Would it? No, no, no. You're thinking uh, like removing. I, I don't think it goes back into the past and erases them from the past. I think it just removes them from existence from this point forward. I want to pull the thing out and ask the stopper, what does it mean exactly by removing from existence? Uh, it is, he will be gone forever. No one can but, ever bring him back except by a wish. But the things he did would uh, still be done. Yes. Okay. Well, it's a good idea, though. Good thought. Yeah. Well, there's still a thought that maybe destroying him would that way would be a sure way to make sure that he doesn't uh, come back. Well, it, so I'll walk up to that particular corpse, and I just want to use burning hands on it uh, until it's crispy. So uh, here I'll make a roll. Uh, please don't fail me now. Maybe we should take one of his hands first. There we go. Um, yeah. His flesh is so rubbery and slimy and such that he does not burn up. That's gross. Yeah. It's almost like he's supernaturally protected against it. You'd think you'd eventually like evaporate the water and such, mm-hmm. but he's not burning. Didn't, didn't someone hear it's a rumor It's almost like about... he's immune to fire. Yeah, didn't somebody have a rumor that they had a ruby that protected them from fire? Yeah, but we searched them, right? I'll, I'll do a I'll do a more thorough search with my dagger to, to see if he's got a ruby hidden in his clothing or something. Or inside him. <laughs> so uh, nothing in his clothing. You want to cut him open? Uh, uh, no, but I will. Do fit them. <laughs> okay. When you go to cut his flesh, it's rubbery, as you'd expect, and it instantly... Any cut you make instantly slurps shut. I got one other idea for this thing. What if we feed it to the other thing? What? Feed it to that mo- to muggle. Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, well, no, so do we We have a magic weapon in our midst, don't we? Yeah, yes. two of them, I think. Why don't we try one of the magic weapons and see if it immediately seals up after being cut by it? Uh, okay. Uh, you try that, and it okay. does. It does seal immediately back up. Oh, Oh, um, I mean, uh, vials seem like a good choice. 
<laughs> well, if you, yeah, but if I think the vial should be used on if we're going to fight Mugdoblub. Yeah, I think it should be used on it. Um, I, I, I'm going to like feel around in its abdomen or something uh, and see if there's like something hard or rock like inside of the corpse. You can't get your mouth past like his neck. There's something like that blocks it from there. Like his uh, his uh, throat contracts so hard that you can't get your hand into his stomach. Well, no, I mean, I, like, I was going to feel his abdomen from the outside and oh. push like a doctor might. Yeah, you know. yeah, there might be something in there. Inside his stomach, something, some sort of hard rock-like thing. Uh, the hard rock. Oh, man. Thing. What do you think, guys? How do we get something out that seals immediately? Um, like, we have to use the, I mean, as far as I can tell, yeah, just use the potion, remove him from existence, and leave the ruby. We could. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the the ruby stays behind. We could take him to the cauldron and try and boil him until he's completely soup. Maybe he'll be, maybe um, be immune to fire, but not heat. Or we just take the body out and we <laughs> and we uh, work on it over time and figure it out. Um, Let's not stay here too long either way. Yeah, I'm thinking the vial is a fun choice. Because we know right. we're going to do enough to mug the glove to um, defeat it anyway. And we don't know that we need to fight that thing. We just uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. to, to, All right. to destroy him. I'm, I'm okay with it. All right. All right. I pull out the vial. Okay. It it protests violently against being used on such a mundane thing. You can ignore it and still use it if you like. Uh, we should not be using the vial on this thing. Okay. Yeah, All listen right. to Fastbeat. He's right. <laughs> well, here's an idea. What if what if one of us cuts open his stomach and someone else just jams their hand in there and and um, grabs whatever's in its stomach before he, it seals up? Try it. You yeah, haven't nailed it yet deep enough for that to work, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. He's a great sword. Um, I can just, you know, <laughs> we can tie him so that he's hanging in, in midair and then use the great sword to try and cut him in half with a single blow. How about the Heimlich? <laughs> also, well, he's... Joyce, I like the Heimlich. Just hang him upside down, see if it drips out of him. <laughs> so trying the Heimlich on him, you feel like it could possibly work. You got to get somehow get him to really retch, though, and that's not doing it. It's not quite enough. Um, well, let's try stringing him up so he's hanging upside down for yeah. a start. That'll help. Yeah. Um, still doesn't quite do it. Um, can we? What if you stop his, his gag reflex? If you could get his gag reflex going, you might have a chance. So I'm going to just try and, and stick my finger in his mouth. <laughs> it's going to take something more powerful. Um, I'm not putting my dick in his mouth. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Stick the great sword up there. Yeah, Still like not enough. Is... Still not enough. No. Oh, man. Ten foot oh. pole. Still not enough. <laughs> uh, do we have anything else? Um, uh, not that I can... How about the goop from the uh, uh, the skeleton who told us how to get here? We don't have any of that, though. It'd be a long way back. Uh, I think that's what's actually giving it this property. That goop is what's been creating all of these um, <clears throat> probably things. Mm. Uh, how many how many inventory slots would carrying this body take? Uh, just two. You guys can, you guys can drag them around. All right, let's get out of here. At least bring them back maybe to the catfish. Yeah, that makes sense. There. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't want to be sitting here. What are we yeah, missing? Let's, gonna, let's move. Um, so you can go back to the ways you've come and check those. There was like several things that, several chambers where there's like weird things that you didn't really investigate. There was the area where there was the skeletons that you didn't find a way to get to the skeletons. There's the door to the north of Mugdolblub's area. Um, that's your choices. So, various random rooms by the halflings, uh, doors that go out to where the skeletons were shooting at you, or north of Mugdol Blood. Well, our clerics have been having really good luck today with Turn on Dead. Maybe we should try go after the that. skeletons. Sure. Yeah, we want to try that? to find how to okay, get gonna, in there with, for them. I'm going to move you guys all back to kind of an area where you would start heading that direction. Save you time. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so here you are back up here. Okay. You remember there's various odd rooms to your west, so I'm just moving to the first of those odd rooms. 
So the first room you come to is the room where the dagger was, where the corpse, the charred corpse of the halfling was. And then later, there was the charred corpse of one of the um, bitter molds, and that was now holding the dagger. And they were dragging the charred corpse of the halfling away. Um, so, so I just want to tell the group that the if if what this guy has in his stomach is this gem, it renders you immune to fire. Right. So you oh. could theoretically, once you have the gem, you should be able to pick up the dagger. True. Okay, so the room you're in here has a compass rose carved into the floor. It's got bones scattered around the room. It had the body of the halfling um, clutching the silver dagger. The body was completely burned to a cinder. And now it's got the body of a bitter mold clutching the silver dagger completely burned to a cinder. To the north was a door where you got the skeleton from. Remember, there's the the, mm-hmm. the basin with the ashes in it. You sifted them. You got the pearl. You took the pearl out. And all the ashes uh, became the skeleton. Became the skeleton. Yeah. Then to your west... To the north is a passageway that heads to the halflings. To the south, I'll just put you to the south here. So the south is this chamber where the oozes were. So yeah, there was many holes along the wall. And then well, there's um, the palm of my sword. Right. <laughs> so do you want to go yeah. to the north by the halflings or to the west into the next chamber? Uh, go west here. Yeah. The next chamber oh, you yeah. had. Um, you had the bas relief carving on the north wall. It right. showed well. It was kind of runny and distorted, but you think you made out in it a many-fingered man standing atop right. bitter mold keep, dropping a heart-shaped stone into his mouth. That's right. Well, then you had that, two that's... fountains in the south. Right. One was uh, obsidian, the one to the west there, and the water smelled of sulfur. I don't remember if anyone drank that or not. And the one to the someone, east, someone drank something, and that's what gave him the third eye. Tucker. Yeah, Tucker drank, uh, I think... Drink the, the pink liquid. The I pink think. liquid, yeah. yeah. The pink liquid um, had a catfish floating inside it. You pulled it out, it was mutated. You drank it, and Tucker got a third eye. I don't know if anyone drank the Western water. That's not no, like yeah, sulfur. I think so. so sulfur is pretty gross, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Can we spoon uh, uh, or put, down his throat. Throat. put some of that down the dead body's throat? You can if you like. Uh, that's Let's a good idea. Let's try it. All right. You pour that down his throat, and he coughs and gags and sputters, and a ruby flies out of his mouth, yes. lands on the ground with a clatter, and is there waiting to be picked up. Is it heart shaped? It is heart shaped. Aha. Uh-huh. I'm going to stab the body. Uh, it's still rubbery, but not nearly as impervious as it was before. I'm going to hack it up. Okay. Yeah, you're able to. <laughs> I miss my constitution. <laughs> oh, the good news is that does come back after a long rest. Okay, so you got okay. this heart-shaped glittering ruby with a crack down the center. Still, nonetheless, Ooh. of great value, it looks like. Uh, um, does anyone want to test my hypothesis about the dagger? I think Fast Feet should do it. Maybe we should test it with a torch first. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the, the dagger that brings you to cinders. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to swallow it to get the advantage of it? <clears throat> I hope not. Oh, that's a good call, yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope not. Who wants to hold the gem and who wants to put the torch to them? <laughs> I'll do it if no one else goes. Like I'll do I it. Malcor will always volunteer, but if you want to do it, you can do it. Uh, go for it. I'll do okay, it. Okay, Malcor holding the gem. Yes, the torch does not hurt you. Wow. wow. Furthermore, you're more charismatic and stronger. Oh. Nice. Is that even possible? <laughs> 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 All right, uh, go Malcor, go grab that dagger. Yeah, let's, let's go, go try to grab that drag dagger. Uh, when you pick up the dagger, nothing happens to you. You have a dagger in your hand. Sweet, nice. So just remember to hand up, drop the dagger, <laughs> hand off the gem before you pick up the dagger. Right, right, right. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> All right. Um, I think we should call it there because the other yeah. explanation is not that much, and you guys got the best treasures out of the whole adventure. Well done. Cool. Um, nice. Let's go over what the XPs would have been. So, the uh, the Compass Rose Hall, getting the plus one dagger named Wrathbolt is worth three XPs. The dagger's plus one. It's called Wrathbolt. Of course, you need to have also the gem to use it or get real lucky because as soon as you touch it, as soon as you take possession of it from someone else, you take D100 fire damage. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, I would have a, a one in a hundred chance of surviving. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, the I got a full five percent chance to survive. <laughs> you said three XP for just for the that was for okay. that one. Agra. Yeah, the bitter mold. Okay, so the bitter mold family tomb is another three for cloven heart. That's the name of the ruby you have. So cloven heart gives you immunity to fire, plus two strength and plus two charisma. Um, that was and worth that was three. three XP. Okay. Yeah, and then you got two gold and ruby pendants. That was worth uh, one XP for those. The tooth pillar, you got one, one XP for getting the gems off of it, or the gold teeth. One off XP of it. for both. Yeah, for both. Yeah. How much for the teeth? Uh, I'll give you a total in the end. Uh, one XP for the teeth. One XP for the potion of extirpation. <laughs> she haven't used yet, so you still have that to split up. And and then oh, two XP for the actually the bodies. I mean, not, not the bodies. The bitter mold, family tomb. For a grand total of three, three, six, seven, eight, no, ten XPs. Hey. Ooh, so, right. close. so close. So you each get 10 XPs, and then treasure to split up. You have the cloven heart. You have a plus one dagger. Which but they have to go together, right? They don't necessarily, because you can drop the heart after you pick up the dagger. Oh, that's true. As long as you possess the dagger and you don't give it to anyone else, no one, no one else takes damage from it. So you guys can get those split up separately. And uh, the potion of extirpation. So, and do we know exactly what that potion does now, or do we? Yeah, still basically it. <clears throat> it does what it said. Huh. Targets are utterly removed from reality and cannot be returned by anything short of a wish. You can pour the potion on one object or creature, filling up to a close area. So that's a five by five by five. Uh -huh. It's nice. uh, chaotic in personality. It protests loudly while being used. Never agrees that the target is the right choice for extirpation. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> uh, that and let's throw in. Uh, two potions of healing for those of you who don't get the, the three cool items. <coughs> Everyone roll a d20 and try and whoever rolls highest will go first on picking treasure. Oh, and also if you're playing with me, there'll be a limit on how many you can have at second level. One per minute item, so if you already have one, you'd have to discard it or trade it to someone who got one of them. At If you made it to third level, you could have up to two per minute items. Okay, and potions uh, you can have up to your level in potions. So, first pick looks like it goes to Brahm. Uh, Cloven Heart, plus two Strength, plus two Charisma, Unity to Fire, plus one Dagger, uh, Wrath Bolt, Potion of Extirpation, or two Potions of Healing. One of the two Potions of Healing. Right. Uh, oh, boy. Shouldn't, um, shouldn't the, the, the gem and the dagger go together, though? No, because they. No, um, yeah. you can drop the gem after you have the dagger in your hand. You just need to make oh. sure that before you give the dagger to someone, you they have the gem. They have the gem. Yeah, they so can then drop it, and around. someone else can take the gem. It's inconvenient yep. to make it a throwing dagger, however. No, as, oh, long, as, yeah. as, long, as, as long as if they try to grab it, then you're out of luck, right? Yeah, if it fell on the ground by them, they go to grab it, they die, but now you can't get it back because you would die if you touched it, unless you can take the D100 fire damage. Oh, okay. <laughs> but if it's just you picking it up damage. after having thrown it, you're okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, as long as no yeah. one else tries to take possession of it, you're always okay to leave it, pick it back up. Yeah. I'd, I'd really, I really kind of like the gem, but I don't know... A, might be better for a warrior. I have good charisma, and it, it would really be nice to have uh, a couple extra gear slots. I'm, I just don't have enough to have the torches. Uh, for now, I'm going to take the cloven heart. Brom takes the cloven heart. Uh, second pick is Eric Gamriel. Now the dagger, potion of extirpation, two potions of healing. Um, I'm just going to take a potion of healing. All right. Uh, next pick is fast beat. The dagger for sure. Fast takes the dagger. Next pick is ten or uh, Malcor. Potion extirpation oh. or healing? Um, I'll take the extirpation. Okay. And then healing for uh, Badger. Now, did anyone have too many items right now? Yeah, I'm trying to look. Uh, I think I'm... A potion extirpation is a consumable, so you don't have to count that. Oh, It'd be okay, fast so no. feet or Brom. Do you have two magic items or are you not third level? I don't have um, any magic items You're good? At all. Okay. And Brom? That's the only one I have. That's and the one I, you have. I do have... I'll level to three with those ten. I have fourteen, so do I add six and back to zero and then four, or do I just do? I, I'm not sure which way. That's a good question. Yeah. I don't know for sure. Yeah. For good so question. Yeah, I think it resets every Good time. question for the yeah, forums. Yeah, it goes back to zero, and then you've go. You have to go up to the next. Uh, Correct. Right, but it's a carryover. I would check. Yeah, I would check the uh, forums on that. See if anyone has an answer. And I'm sure um, uh, Kelsey will chime in if she's around. Yep. All right, well, guys, that was cool. You guys I, I, did awesome in that. 
Yeah, that was fun. I was lucky was enough fun. to level from that. Do you want to see my? Uh, sure, you uh, can roll your hit points if you like. My and my uh, talent and roll. And your talent roll, yeah, over. yeah. All right. So Ooh. the less interesting one is hit points. I uh, get another one. Not, no, you don't count your uh, con. Huh? Your con you only counts at first level. Oh, it only counts at first Correct. level. Correct. Yep. Oh, okay. So now that makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here comes okay. Brahms. Oh three. no! Three more hit points. Cool. No, it's only two, right? You don't count your con. Oh, that's right. Yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. bonus or negative. Yeah, uh, yeah it doesn't help. My I got seventeen points. out of twenty, so I oh, didn't quite level up. Can everybody think four. Okay, big four for fast feet. No, oh, for oh, three hit points for fast feet. <laughs> level three, three hit points. <laughs> Ouch. The talent roll on is it a? It's a two d six. Yeah. Here's my talent roll. Ooh, a ten. Uh, uh, learn additional wizard spell of any tier you know. So oh, nice. I, I could so get you can two do second now, yeah. Spell. Wow. Nice. But oh, you get fast feet with a six. Uh, I don't have the rules handy. I got him. Look at him. Yeah. For a thief, a six is your backstab deals plus one dice of damage. Oh, wow. So oh, no, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Oh. Uh, six is plus two to strength, dexterity, or charisma. Oh, nice. I'll take it. Nice. That's good to get. Yeah. And Brom as a cleric. Could be. A plus one uh, ranged or melee, I think. Yeah. You cool. don't do much of either. Well, you got that crossbow now. Yeah. I'm going to take ranged. Okay. So uh, on Tuesday this week, I'm running a funnel or a grinder type adventure where you start at the zero level characters. And there's some spots open. So if you're free Tuesday at 8 p.m., let me know and I'll add you to the group. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, look for future announcements on either the Twitter channel or on Discord if I run any more. Excellent. There's some third level oh, ones okay. by Source of Victory that I want to run. He's a really oh, good writer. Good. Cool, cool, cool. All right, All guys. Right. Thanks for playing. See you next time. Hopefully. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks everybody.